All right, now we're started. We started the so, podcast. You can you hear everybody. talking about. Yeah, hey everybody, talk to the internet podcast number uh, 14? Uh, 14. 14. Yeah, 14, I think. Uh, right. Bruce was just telling a story about how when he gets a haircut, occasionally his partner Autumn will be reduced to tears. She'll cry. See his see his face. Good, see his haircut. Good tears. Good, good tears. tears cu- but refers to him as cute. About how cute I am. Aaron, what's up? I saw you're you're on staycation. Awesome. Sorry. Aaron works for Achievement. Hunter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, was a member of Inside Gaming in 2019, so we worked together. That's right. Yeah. Uh, awesome dude. Um. Uh. Anyway, Bruce, Bruce, you would muse that maybe that's not the best thing to hear from a partner because... As a heterosexual male, yes. for me, I would like to feel masculine. So when, when, uh, when Autumn sees me, she goes, you're so handsome and debonair. But it's that she <laughs> says that I'm cute and cries, which, okay. It's all right. I love Autumn, obviously. But it is kind of the same reaction one might have to, like, a really smooshy pug on Instagram. <laughs> and typically, and this, this is where I'm going to bite off some beef here. Pass this around the room for you guys to chew on. Typically cute and sexy are at opposite ends of the emotional spectrum. I would agree. Hmm. Typically. I, th- I think... Mm, no, I disagree. Okay, all right, all right. I think it's like a, uh, a Venn diagram. And, you, you know, attraction. Hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It can be both cute and sexy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you know, I wouldn't say they're opposite. I think they're they're somewhere intermingled. They're on opposite ends of the in the middle part of the Venn diagram. If if attraction is the is the middle part. I have had uh, conversations at length with women about this very subject, cute and sexy. Because oh. I would always be like, ah, do I want to be called cute? And the women that I was with at the time would say yes. They would be like, oh no no yeah, like when we say you're cute, that means we want to fuck you. And I'd be like, oh oh okay oh, great yeah. all right good. Um, well, but, then we can refine the we can refine the theory then a little bit. Perhaps ladies can coexist in the cute fuckable area more I, than I guys think, can. I think they probably can. Mm. I think they probably can. I think you're right. I don't know. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think based on our interpretation, <laughs> yes. But I, I would I would like to hear a counterpoint at some point. We need to bring a lady on the show who can actually speak to this. Because <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're, 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 we're just... No, I'm just telling you the experiences I've no, had. I'm not is, speaking for uh, all women. This yeah, is yeah. the magic of, of this content, is that we, as, as a collective brain trust, don't bring gender into it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We are the... We're just see, putting our heads together and figuring things out. <laughs> and we Jeez. represent the entire spectrum of humanity here. K- Cameron this, said, you guys are overthinking this. Autumn was giving you a compliment. Just accept it. Okay, I, all right. I would definitely agree with all that. Right, right. <laughs> no, I, I refuse to accept that advice. Oh, all right. Well, We're going to go on this for another 45 minutes. <laughs> so buckle in, everybody. <laughs> hey, how's it going, guys? It's been a, it's been a crazy week, huh? Has it? Uh, yeah. Uh, Dan Hauser left Rockstar. I saw that, yeah. Um, yeah. Kobe? Co- wait, did that happen? That happened on... S- no, that, that happened... No, a week ago. That happened a week and a half ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, week and a half ago. It's it still is still sad. I will still say, very yeah. in- Incredibly sad. Yeah. Like, uh, I happened to watch the um, the tribute that the Lakers did mm. uh, to Kobe on... was it, I think it was last Friday. And uh, it was it was incredibly moving. Now, it was one of those things where, like, for me, Kobe Bryant's had a mixed bag of public perception for years and years and years because of things that happened in his past. A long time ago, um, but the thing that saddens me the most is obviously the children and the families that were in the helicopter crash. That's the just the total bummer, um, and one of those things that you just you, everybody can agree was just taken too soon, mm-hmm. just too soon. Mm. So um, yeah, so either way, it was very very sad. Yeah, very someone sad. was asking earlier in one of one of my streams, like, what's it like in L.A. Um, and yeah, there are billboards that just have memorials up. All the city buses. I have like Rip Kobe on the on the marquee in front, yeah, so do. it really is it really is just kind of a city in mourning, which is which is sad. It is. Yeah. It is real sad. And then I guess Trump got acquitted, so there's your politics joke. Oh yeah, today. Th- that's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, I mean nobody nobody thought it was gonna go any other way, right? That's true. That's yeah. True. Yeah. That's true. But uh, architecture, I'm glad you brought that up. Crazy week. Lawrence confirmed in Cyberpunk. I'm I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Well, oh not, tell them why. Welcome to the next hour and a half of the podcast. You're not in yeah. Cyberpunk <laughs> yet. Yes. Yes. But I've got I've got crazy news for you guys. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I am proud to announce, <laughs> in this moment, the glorious return of Cyberwatch. Oh wow, we're gonna do it this early. Okay. Yeah, I don't right. I don't have I don't have a stinger. I didn't make one yet. But what, can you press one of these? I mean, you can press any of those buttons, but they're not gonna do what you want. I, I didn't do anything. I mean, like oh. it's just gonna switch the scenes. Cyberwatch. I guess that's what we'll do for now. <laughs> Um, the, sw- the scene switched to all the audio viewers there. Right? And then, click on uh, do you want Lawrence and oh, Bruce that's there? that's not the right one. The, well, there, yeah, there you go. go. That's the one. Uh, yeah, so, uh, this is coming back for a very special reason. 
Um, because I got the inside track now, you guys. I've been I've been working the angles. I've been watching literally. the movements. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Bruce. Yes, literally. Uh, playing the long game is what I would call it. Uh, and Stephanie, girlfriend, who I used to brag about working at Blizzard all the time, I have a totally different reason to brag about her now because she is now the head of communications for North America for CD Projekt Red. That's right. Working on Cyberpunk 2077, which means I got the inside track. I Here's the thing. I got the inner scoops, Bruce. I would like to celebrate Stephanie Why? and not talk about Lawrence. No! Because Stephanie... <laughs> She's the one with the job. She worked very hard to get to where she is. And I yes. like the game more, <laughs> maybe. What? Bruce, come on. Jeez. But... I got the scoops, man! I mean, you do. You have the scoops. My plan is to uh, basically conduct a long campaign of emotional terrorism on her. So Jesus she, Christ. She has to reveal the secrets of the game to you. Uh -huh. um, this is, yeah, it's going to be like a, a long, a long drawn-out thing of withdrawing emotional support, mm -hmm. uh, refusing right. to do housework and things like that. That's, that's called emotional manipulation. Exactly. Yes. Thank okay, you. All right. uh, also in the news, I guess the Amber Heard stuff. I'm an Amber Heard now. Oh yeah, that's right. Sick. Uh, that's right. Justice for Johnny Depp. I'll, just, yeah, I'll take away I all also, the cell phones around before. Uh, God, this is already spiraling out of control. A hashtag Justice for Johnny justice Depp. Justice for Johnny Depp. But I'm doing it for our viewers and for our sponsors. Uh, so she, she's tough. She'll she'll be okay. Um, but first scoop. Uh huh. For, oh wait, is this Cyberwatch? Are we doing Cyberwatch? Yeah, Cyberwatch. It's active That's now. full screen again. The right. there, there. By chat, Cyberwatch. It's Cyberwatch time. I'm gonna make a video later. <laughs> uh, first scoop, big scoop, everybody. This is very real, mm -hmm. even though I haven't had the conversations yet. But it's basically you haven't confirmed with Stephanie yet. Well, or anyone else at the company. <laughs> okay. But breaking news, because mm -hmm. there's really no way this can't happen at this point, right? Yeah, that's true. We all know Keanu is gonna be in the game. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, huge. He's like a digital cyber ghost, whatever, Johnny Silverhand, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge, huge. What they haven't announced yet, uh -huh. and I have yet to talk to them about, uh -huh. is that I will be joining him as another digital cyber ghost man. But what? we're going to be best friends, Bruce. No. <laughs> like cyber ghost brothers? Yes. Yes. He's, okay, so he was the what? front man. He was the guitarist of a yeah. group called Samurai. Mm. I will be the drummer, right? Yeah. And we'll just pal around and be best friends. And we'll like we'll have banner and then we'll hang out and be That's crazy. So yeah. When I went into the E3 demo and they showed me all the scenes with him for like twenty minutes, I didn't, I didn't Game's see Game's not out yet. So it's plenty of time still to in development. It. Still in development. Have you yeah. shot your motion, oh. motion capture? Uh oh no. No. Uh no. No, don't have a date. Uh haven't like I said, haven't emails haven't really been sent yet. They're just okay. they're in the drafts folder like they have been for the last two years. All right. But. Uh, but I'm pre I mean, it's it's foregone at this point. Yeah. Right? It's gotta happen. I mean, yeah. you look like his brother. <laughs> yeah, I do. Young, younger brother. Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Sontag, they're exactly the same. It's a Patico baby. So uh, you can basically take that one to the bank. 100% confirmed, I'm sure. So should uh, I buy CD Projekt Red stock? Because it's gonna ooh. go up since Lawrence well, is not until Is there I Lawrence stock? I mean, oh, is there a Lawrence stock? Can I buy the Lawrence? Yeah, stock? dude. Yeah, I got a Bitcoin wallet. Just send send everything you want. <laughs> that's send like, everything that's you want. Like Lawrence stock into the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where's the, is there any return or? Uh, yeah, I'll draw something up. Okay. Uh, give me a huh? napkin and a marker. We'll make it happen. I mean, yeah. I can't wait. I'll send it over. Uh, if you if you're really nice to me for like the next year or two, <laughs> I might invite you over while we're hanging out. You know? Oh, wait. Who's while we are hanging out? Me and Keanu. Keanu? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was in the game. We're gonna guys. hang out, and play Mario Kart. But stuff. he's an actor, Lawrence. I don't think that. <laughs> yeah, I am too. It doesn't mean he'll he'll be your friend. I'm a, I'm acting right now. I'm acting like I'm not really pissed off that you guys aren't supporting me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So you know, you may be a little nicer to your friend. Here. All right, everyone. All the chats, please support Lawrence. Thank you. Thank in, you. In his and please stop saying insider trading. He uh, <laughs> he may know some secret information. Maybe getting a little bit of a leak here. You're gonna get leaks every week. Every this is what I'm promising. Cyberwatch every week. Cyberwatch, Cyberwatch every week. New info right here. Only on this podcast. Oh, talk to the internet exclusive. <laughs> yes. Exclusive. Yes. I gotta come up with an exclusive graphic now. Damn it. You don't have to come up with any of those. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, I can. We'll just do this each time. They'll know. Exclusive. Audio listeners won't, but you know. We're doing the Vogue. It's basically Madonna Vogue, is what we just did. I mean, that's a big. It's topical, right? Yeah, Cyberpunk uh, takes place in a role where Vogue is the only dance you're allowed to do. This is also a, a leak. Yes. Ah, uh, I gave away next week's. <laughs> ah. Damn it. Well, I'm sure you'll have more leaks. Yeah. I will. I absolutely will. Ah, uh, well. Okay. All right, back to the podcast. <sighs> I'm glad to get that. I've been so excited, you guys. Okay. Well, been, yeah, you must have been. Burning with that secret. Yeah, it's been hard to it's been hard to sleep. It's been hard to oh boy, that guy's getting shit on. That's a woman. Why would Sorry. she ever do that? Whoa. Oh. I like how the first one hit and she uh, she stuck in there. Bang. I oh, think it's no, supposed to be a, on, news, a news report, maybe. Yeah. I, I love those moments where you're like shooting no. on location somewhere and you're like, 
I got a great idea. Hey, I'll put my head between their legs. I'm going to tuck my head out of the legs. I bet somebody was like, hey, you know, they might shit on you. They're like, nah, that, how, that wouldn't happen. Shit's all over. Good. I see, I see a lot of support in these chats. This is good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Look at there, there is a lot of support. Maybe I'll I'll let you buy uh, a glossy print of me and Keanu hanging out. I'll let you buy one of those at the discounted oh. rate. Oh, so we wouldn't have to wait in line at like Comic Con. Oh no, you, I mean. Oh, we still have to. Okay. Be, all, right. all right, all right. People see you skip the line, then everyone's gonna want to skip the line. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. right about that. I'll That's just true. I'll uh, I'll knock off a little bit of the price there. What uh, video game are you in, Kraken? Um, I. Uh, okay, you caught me off guard there. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what video game I'm in. Go ahead. I am also in Cyberpunk. What? But I am Keanu Reeves' older brother. Cooler older brother. What? I didn't... We I, get to work together, Bruce. Did you guys see each other in the auditions? Not yet. No, uh, no, I haven't, we, I haven't we, got we my call back. Oh, you haven't, you haven't we, auditioned. We, I actually requested that I don't see Lawrence ever okay. in my uh, auditions. Or That's probably that makes for the best. Uh, yeah, because yeah. you know how actors have to act out their scenes separately, and then they put them all together because it's a video game, right? Uh, except for me, I acted with Keanu Reeves. Oh, yeah. in the same room. Mm -hmm. Were you saying anything? Uh, he told me that I was his best friend. Oh, and no, for now. Uh, and then he said, and he went like this, and he went, and Lawrence is a hack like that. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, everyone thinks that until they, this they is, see the magic. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. This, this is, is my league. This is a this um, is a takedown live my, on the same my, podcast. My <laughs> Cyberwatch League. Uh, okay, and yeah, sorry. Real in um. I think in Bruce's chat, sorry. Somebody mentioned that last week's podcast is not out on the audio feed I'm, yet. I'm going to scroll so the poop is gone. I, uh, <laughs> you want to see poop anymore? I'm, I'm watching oh, the happy dog. Like sorry, I, uh, I haven't uploaded it yet. I gotta, I'll do that soon. Oh, we'll, get, we'll get to the audio, audio yeah. feed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the audio feed for the AMV podcast is going to be a little rough. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a little rough, but I can leave all the music in, so at least there's that. Mm -hmm. um, I, by the way, I hope everybody in chat liked that AMV podcast. That was awesome. I loved it. we got to do it again. I had so much fun doing yeah, that. Yeah, that was definitely an experiment, but... Uh, I thought we had a lot of fun. I, I also realized about halfway through, the definition of AMV is very different for different people. Because oh yeah. yeah, I never, oh. I never, I mean, this I never. Maybe something I brought up repeatedly. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> I never thought of it purely as anime music videos, but like, I was, I always thought it was animated music videos. No, it's oh. anime music videos. Huh. I don't know about that. I think it's. I think maybe it started off as that, but I think it's transformed. It, it, may, I think. Have, it may have transformed. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if chat can 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 chime in. But I, I saw some chat actually in, in the YouTube comments saying I thought it was animated music videos, not anime music. There you videos. go. It's so absolutely anime. It is. It started out as anime music videos, but it may have. It, who knows? It may have changed. Things on the internet change fast. Guys. It do. Yeah. It real. It do. do. It real do. <laughs> I mean it. it I definitely. I will. Yeah. I'll admit. Despite the moniker, it has branched out to just be like fandom. Music videos using assets that are either like recorded in game or mm -hmm. released by uh, it's it's part of remix culture at this point, which is yes awesome. But I do think to understand the core of it and also the culture of it, one needs to focus on anime, and also anime is better. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. There Objectively, we go. Okay. Oh! we're here first. Yeah, this old this old couple's getting what? it's getting they're getting it. Oh hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I've been I've actually been dreading uh, practicing a dance for my wedding because mm. apparently you know bride and groom are supposed to dance. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I don't Autumn and I haven't talked about it, but I was I don't think she even wants to maybe do a dance. Oh. But I feel like we should do a dance. Yeah. She went to all those cyber raves. I mean, Autumn has been a dancer, a yes. ballet dancer for a very long time. Oh, she doesn't yeah. want to dance. Yeah, yeah. Have a little bit of dance. Have her put on that gas mask and just go crazy. Going to, I, 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 I mean, like, I feel like I should just let her dance. Well, look, okay. As we all know, this is a nice private moment. You can say whatever you want. Yeah, no one's, all, <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna speaking hear. to thousands of people. So, if you want to, we can talk about this. We can have like a little moment. We're like, okay, if, if you are you are you self conscious about dancing? Or yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm a terrible dancer. Okay, horrible dancer. I I, I guarantee no. you she's not marrying you for your dancing. She's marrying That's you. That's right. You're right. So if you you're right about that. You can just have this, make the dance be, you know, kind of a fun thing. Do a little cha-cha slide. What? Do uh, Do the electric. Electric that, slide? Yeah. slide? That's the one. How, how many slides can I do? <laughs> just slide everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I don't know. I don't think that we're going to do it, but maybe we will. Uh -huh. I don't know. You're not giving yourself enough credit, Bruce. I bet if you if you practice, you... Uh, yeah, I'd be like them. Everybody's got to practice everything. I, I do need to practice that. Yeah. You can stream it. Content. People have been saying over and over and over, are you going to stream your wedding? Oh, that's creepy. Mm. I mean, are you though? No. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely not. What am I sub for? Jeez. I'm not going to stream my wedding. Doesn't that, wouldn't that be weird to stream my wedding? I agree that it's kind of weird. Um, this, and this is something that I've actually thought quite a bit about, is about where where mm. I'm going to draw the line between what I consider private and part of my personal life and what yeah. I'm willing to share. And it's, um, you know, when people ask for more uh, visibility into your life, 
it's it's tempting to just give it to him. It is. Yeah, yeah. Especially since it all pays into a system of like growth and, and momentum and stuff like that. So, But like I work out every day. People are like, should stream your workouts? And I'm like, I, I guess I could just put up a garbage webcam and have music going in the background while I'm doing my lifts. But do then I'm just like, man, people in the chat are going to tell me I'm doing it wrong. They're going to backseat you. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 Oh, that happened to me. I, I did a, a stream where I was playing World of Warcraft and... I was like, all right, I, I feel bad for being sedentary for so long, so I want to start working out again. So here's the deal. Every time I die, I do 10 push-ups. Nice. Like, every time this happens, we do this. Like, whenever I'm on a flight path and not able to do anything, I'm just going to do crunches. Cool. And, like, it was like a five-hour stream, oh. and I was actually ruined for the entire week. <laughs> but That's a great idea, though. There was also a mix of supportive viewers that were trying to help me, like, understand how to... You know, that's, those, that, those that's are nice. helpful. And yeah. people were doing them with you. Yeah, some of them were doing them with us, which was that's actually great. really that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then there are others that were like, "That's not a fucking push up," and like, "Like do them again." And I'm like, "All right, fuck off. This is not. I'm not doing this." They all sound like Guidos. Yeah. Do them again. Do them again. <laughs> oh, that a crunch. Get out of here. Yeah, that's what I assume. The thing that like that needs to be reinforced is the more you do something, the better you get at it. So whether or not you're learning how to dance or even just doing crunches, like people assume that you should be able to just do a push up good. Yeah. No, it's still an activity that requires like knowledge of body and experience. Yeah. And I also got long noodle arms, which I've learned oh, you makes it a arms. lot harder to yeah, do a, you got more a form. But you got that range of motion, man. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be jacked to keep doing those push ups. Yeah, all I gotta do, I can also push people away very effectively. <laughs> I've learned that from experience. You're right about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that just, that just lets people tie you up, though. Get those long noodle arms out there. People are gonna grab them and crawl up on you. Oh, yeah. You're gonna get on your back and start biting your neck. I saw your chat talking, I was watching one of your streams the other night, and I saw your chat talking about how big your hands are. Your hands oh, they're big. big. I also haven't cut my fingers. They are really so. big. Yeah. Why are they so Ooh. big? They're so long. Beat all yeah. those video games, man. Goodness gracious. Those so are why are you so good at games? Yeah, right? I can reach the keys just that much farther away. <laughs> It helps. Did you have like the the one octave spread on a piano? I think so. Probably. This is like, right? Um, I also heard that like, well, it's probably harder though for my brain eye coordination. Like, I got longer to go. I oh, got yeah. long arms and long fingers. <laughs> more, uh, you know, really? cerebral yeah. energy burn to move that around. Yeah, my my wingspan is like insane. Like it, the like when I went to the doctors and they like measure you know all the ports yeah. like. My wingspan's like in a crazy percentile. They're like, this isn't human. <laughs> you're, you're lanky Kong, dude. There's no way this is effectively possible. That's so. really isn't the isn't it like the speed of light for a like a neuron to fire from when you think about it to where it does it? I mean, yeah, it's electricity. It's right. It's it's got to be. It's huh? got to be really because I mean, there's lag involved in like having your muscles activate and like overcoming the momentum the of your thing. own movement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. That's why once we can just shove needles into our brains, we'll all be better gamers. <laughs> Well, don't have to worry what are about the needles for to get the electrons or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, to get them out or get them in? Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> okay. So you need get to out get the them bad out. ones, get in the good ones. It's like leeches, but yeah, needles. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. You get all the good gamer thoughts oh. in, all the bad gamer thoughts. Did Jesus we ever think? I, I love this. I've never seen that. this. Okay, what's on screen right now? Cannibal spaghetti. This is exactly what I was trying to do at the couch shop uh, food lab thing that I was on. <laughs> That's I, awesome. I made like a fucking rice crispy head, and I put more, like Jello in for the brains. But I this is I love that. Wow. So much better. Oh my god, that's, that's really well made and not it's and frightening horrifying. for uh, people that are listening audio wise. I never want to scroll off this. It is fine. We'll, we'll keep it here for a long time. <laughs> oh, you don't like the girl getting pooped on, but you're okay with a skinless face? Yes. Kraken doesn't like bodily functions. I figured this out. Mm. He doesn't like bodily, generally bodily functions. It's more that I don't like exposing my, uh, not my pure innocent chat to such grotesque visuals as a woman Kraken, getting you realize you're, shit on by a horse. You stream on the internet. Right? Yes. You realize the internet is the dirtiest, Have you ever watched my stream? Place. Yes, I've it's a kid's stream. show. <laughs> it's basically a kid's show. You curse a lot. Yeah, I mean. but cursing's... Uh, yeah, everyone's doing it. <laughs> I The content is always innocent and pure. You know that all of your viewers have masturbated directly before your stream, maybe during your stream, and then after your stream. Okay, at least I don't ask them like you do, okay? It's not a big I'm deal. Not, I don't ask You're, anybody. This is all, this is I'm all, just telling you what they We're do. back to this. Somehow, every podcast, we're I'm back just, to Bruce getting masturbated. That's on. not what I said. <laughs> it's weird how often It's what you meant, though. Yeah. I'm it, telling you. It's all, always you bringing Do you think up. that's going to taper off now that you're Keanu Reeves' older brother? It's not. No, it's going to go up. People are going to be busting all kinds of nuts. It's going to go up. Just loads of nuts. All right, I want everybody in chat right now. Baby nuts. You tell me the most recent time. No, I can't. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are only proving our point further, Bruce. I can't do it. I can't, do it. It. I can't do it. There might be people underage. This is not just. Yeah, this is not just. 
not worth it. Let's uh, just go back to the nice skinned face spaghetti. Yeah, the yeah. cannibal spaghetti. Thank you. That is why I've been trying to keep the conversation started here. <laughs> Look, I, your, your chat already got it 15 minutes ago. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, nice job. Right now. They're saying now. Although you're in the, you're in the halo. You, you, you got another hour of like a nice lifetime before it gets complicated again. <laughs> <laughs> Got that glow? Are you listening to Electric Light Orchestra? Oh my god! <laughs> I know Craig, uh, Craig hates talking about. It. I love it. What? You can't no, talk about Bali. Talking about time. after you're done. It's gone. <laughs> you throw a towel over it. You move on with your life. That's when you feel, when you feel the most guilty. <laughs> you throw a towel over it. No. Oh. Just leave it for it's later. Like, it's like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> they do at restaurants. Towels spread something all over just... your your room. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Every time I throw a towel down, my room gets more clean. <laughs> That's right, because he's hiding. He hides the. It's mess. like walking on a fucking patchwork quilt. Yeah, don't, don't different... trip. Whatever you do. Yeah. We should talk about video games. Want to talk about video games? Sure. So, I'm curious to see what you guys think about. Like, since Dan Hauser left Rockstar. Yeah. What does this? Mean? Does it mean anything? Because he, apparently he's been on who's, leave for a year. Who, who is this man? He was the one of the co-founders co yeah. uh, of Rockstar. Oh shoot! Um, but also he's been on leave since what, like spring of 2019 or That's, something. Yeah, something like that. Um, I he was on a sabbatical. Do I, to me, this it's just interesting because it sounds so familiar to I mean, like even yeah. even personally to my to my stuff, but also like to a number of CEOs that do this, where they're just like, usually when they when CEOs go on leave, uh, sometimes, uh. sometimes they'll come back, <laughs> sometimes they'll come back, but most of the time they probably won't. Yeah. And it's usually it's like a phasing out process. Yeah, usually, yeah, usually they're doing that to sort of like, ooh, a non competition clause. That's true. There's that. That too. is often the case as well. Well, yeah. non competition. I mean. I, I don't know for sure, but usually non-competitions start when you leave. Like, that's when you sign the paperwork. Oh, when you actually leave. Yeah. It isn't that's when true. you go on leave? No, I mean, not really. Not, not usually, because you, when you're going on leave, they're, they're still paying. Yeah. Generally, they're still paying. That's sure. more like that's more like a, a soft severance. But they yeah. want you... Okay, again, supposing a lot here, but they they I would assume they want you on the payroll so that, like, if they need you for transition things... Mm, yeah. Um, because, if man, if you're the co-founder of a company and part of the executive team... If you just yeah. peace out, you take a lot of knowledge and information. True, with you're like you. training the the ones that yeah. are coming up. So you're just sitting at home, sipping on a mai tai, and then some emails come in. Hey, what's the password to this? Not, not a bad deal, that? actually. Yeah, no, no, not at all. And if you've if you've stewarded Rockstar to the run that they've had and the money they've earned, yeah, I don't think many people are going to be mad about it. No, also, it's just yeah. like you know, it's a way for the the company to acclimate without you being there while you're still kind of on a lifeline. Non-competition clauses in Formula One often start from their garden leave. Okay. I yeah, I, it could it could go any. Kind I don't know anything about that, but I also love the niche knowledge yeah. in chat. Thank you so much. No, I, yeah, no, thank, I'm sure, it, that, I'm sure that's it's helpful. That's good to know. I don't know what garden leave is either. So. I assume it's the it's the slowly phasing out process that you're we're just talking standing about. in your garden. Yeah, <laughs> oh, your garden maybe, leaf. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. what it is. It's like or a, maybe garden leaf. Maybe he misspoke. <laughs> garden leaf is when it begins. But generally, in the entertainment business, that's not the way it works. Usually, <laughs> usually, not can be clause starts when you leave, um, and. And you don't always have them. Sometimes you can you can leave and do whatever you want. Other times you're under a contract, and if you break that contract and you leave early, uh, you still have the non compete clause. So there there are lots of different ways that it can work. Um, and I I'm sure that it just sounds like he was it sounds like he was done. Uh, like mm -hmm. he probably just started phasing himself out because he was like ah I want to go do something. I'm a billionaire or whatever he is. So well, and you uh, I I can I'm assuming a lot here. This is just my personal take, but I can imagine a guy like that who's worked at that company for that long and seen that many projects like over the course of their five, six year development cycle. And now he's he's out of Red Dead 2. They're working on probably Grand Theft Auto 6. And I can see it's like, you've got your money, you've made your name, you, you've had a career. Um, like why keep putting yourself through that? Yeah. Uh, especially if you're looking at yeah. six more years on Grand Theft Auto 6. And it's like, oh, it's a big prestigious game, but yeah, so we're all the other ones that they made. So ah, BB 8s here. Watch, it's really um, funny. <laughs> Darth Vader wait, you can kill. play as BB eight? Yeah, they they just released this. What uh, does he do? This he rolls. He, he rolls. Scans. <laughs> oh, is he like a support? He uh, he's like a su positions. He's a support hero though. Oh, he has got a little. Zapper. Oh, he's a hero. Yeah, and then also Darth Vader can't kill him because he's too, too fast. Tiny. Yeah. Oh, popped him. Oh, he got him. Uh, yeah. I I mean, as far as what it means for leaving, I don't know. It's. We all have this tendency to believe that, like, there's one amazing name or magnanimous figure that drives everything at a company. You're, you know, you're Steve Jobs, you're Elon Musk. To some degree, that can be true, but I would guess where Rockstar is now, which is just producing tons of really huge budget, like, ongoing service games and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know that they necessarily need one, like, cult of personality to lead that up. 
they probably they have a whole team in place. They have hundreds and hundreds of people that are already doing the work. I don't think it'll affect like the next couple of games. What it might affect is 20 years down the road if Rockstar needs to pivot. They won't have Dan Hauser there to guide that process. Well, I mean, it's it's every those companies usually start out with some sort of like really you know, I guess uh, not. I don't want to say genius, but genius visionary mm-hmm. um, that sort of leads them into the next frontier. Yeah, and then from there, it it's usually then it's the company gets way bigger. I'm mean, Rockstar's a company. Got to be thousands of people. Got to be right. Um, and so at this point, they're. Like you said, they're making games as a service. They they are a much larger company, yep. and it's not just one dude running fifty people. I mean, usually what happens here is like the CEO that leaves. I mean, he's got plenty of money, so he's like, "I miss the the art of games," and then they uh, go back they to, go to the indie. They scale yeah. way back. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they they make a, a lawbringers or I'm kind of a lawbreakers. Yeah, you got I'm the name of, wrong even. I'm kind oh of my god, our boys a, are on there. Yeah, I'm kind of waiting for. Um, oh, no. oh no! Oh no! I'm kind of waiting for. Uh, oh, perfectly cut, beautiful. I'm waiting for um, what is it? I'm waiting for Mike Morheim to like start a new studio. He's got to be burning a non compete, and then I'm gonna guess the day after it's up, he's gonna be like, "Hey, I'm back, yep. and I have ten people, and we're gonna make a game." I'm sure that's gonna happen. Uh-huh. I'm sure I am excited for that. Oh, jeez. Oh my oh, gosh. My boys. What are they doing? Um, I I feel Frightening. like the the role of kind of Bruce, like the role of the 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 person who drives everything. I feel like to some degree their role is to sometimes know how to tell people no. Um. Because it's really easy to just yeah. go around and say, like, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do yeah, it. Yeah. I feel like a really smart leader and filling the role of being like the one voice that everyone listens to is you can come into a room of like 10 department heads who are all like trying to figure out what they're going to do. And then you say, "You no, 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 this is what we're doing. And yeah. then people that's go and do it. Somebody who has a vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Um, so I can, see, I can see that being like, oh, that's neat. I can see that being an effect. Of like of uh, somebody who was in that role, or I assume may have filled that role, mm-hmm. but uh, you know they had a whole year to see how it went without him in the room, and I can only assume that it was okay. It was fine. Yeah. Well, um, there's also plenty of other people that want to be that person for sure. in the room, so Oof. you just got to pick the right one and actually believe in them. I mean, I I've seen a lot of different studios work, and some of them have tried like the, you know, the equal what's the equilateral oh, flat 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 power structure flat, yeah flat man um, structure yeah. which is a great concept and like good for morale but also leads to kind of a chaotic product often because yeah. there isn't that kind of same guiding light at the end of the tunnel and then everything kind of ends up being fringe cases of everything else yep um so yeah i, I don't know there's definitely some sort of happy medium i think where you can have like department leads that have the same shared vision as the creative head and then everyone else under it still has some level of agency but it's it's a very tricky balance. Games are a hard, hard, hard thing to make. We heard uh, Lawrence and I specifically actually heard um, some specific developers that I won't name uh, see that there was a flat management structure, but they were like, "No, nah, that's bullshit." Like they say that it exists here, and to a to a point it does, mm-hmm. but really truthfully, no. There are managers, and sure. they have to lead us, and like because it's I mean like that's that's sort of the way structure goes, especially as you get bigger. It's also just human nature. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, people I think. Even if it's possible that a group of people can get together and communally decide what to do, they're out of that just emerges due to personality type and tone of voice and height, like mm. a lot of a lot of primate eighth brain things. One person that people just listen to. Sometimes that person doesn't even want to be that person, yeah. but they're kind of elected that way because people ask them to. They want sometimes people want direction, and yeah. sometimes they'd like. I mean, the burden of choice is a real thing. Uh, you come home at night and you're like, what do you want to eat for dinner? What, what do you, you want to eat? eat? Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it is nice to have somebody who makes those choices for you and gives you clarity and direction. Um, and I think often people, they, they want authority, but they don't want to make the hard decisions. And then they especially don't want to be responsible for the consequences. No. Oh, that's awesome. He's chomping on a jalapeno. jalapeno. Oh, oh, it's all coming out. It's all Who would let their out. child eat a jalapeno? That was so, so cute. So, uh, lesson well learned. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> it's good in life to uh, to learn things the hard way sometimes. Yeah, there's, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's management, having done it for years and years and years now, it is weird, man. It is a weird, weird thing that I just, like, I learned, I learned a lot of lessons and learned how to get good at it or better at it or whatever. I don't ever thought that I was good at it, <laughs> but to me, every day is a new challenge. The second you think you're good at management is the day you're awful. At. I, yeah, I agree. I um, can't stand yeah. people who, first of all, think that management is like prestigious because you're a leader. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I guess that's neat and all, and and I guess humans value the leader. They do. Yeah. But 
it is it is so much and and Bruce, I'm actually fascinated to compare notes with you about this, but uh, oh man, well, that's, a, was, that's just a Pokemon. I like Fox. Yeah. Um, it is you're right. But like, it seems like being a good leader is more about clearing the way for people and making, is, yeah. spending all your time to make sure they can do what they need to do, and it's less about like sitting in the captain's chair and being regal and respected. That's what mm-hmm. the actually when I first started working at Rooster Teeth, Matt Holm. Uh, he was like, he was like, hey, I like, I've been taking some management classes. Matt said this to me, and was like, um, management's more about clearing the obstacles for people. Yeah, it's not about like telling them what to do or, uh, yeah. or you know, getting them to do something you want them to do. It's more about clearing the obstacles of the things they want to do. Um, yeah, there he goes, Figgy Steven. Uh, and uh, and I was like, huh, that's really. I mean, like, and he's totally right. At that point, I'd managed a couple of years already, but I never thought of it that way in, in such simple terms. And that's truth. That really is what it is. Um, and, and boy, is it hard. <laughs> it yeah. is really, it is really hard. I, I don't, I don't know that it ever got any easier. I don't, I don't yeah. think that it ever got any easier. Managers also have to often take on the, like, res- like the responsibility of failures while sharing success or giving yeah. credit to success yeah. to yeah. people, you know, so that they feel more motivated. So you're exactly right. You kind of have yeah. to like remove yourself from the equation unless you can shelter someone from <laughs> something that's not going to help them. That's right. Yeah, which and I think is uh, definitely worth a lot. Yep, you share your success, but you absorb all the failure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so you really try not to fail is what it really boils <laughs> yeah. down to. Um, Throw other people under the bus. <laughs> yeah. That's... As quickly as possible. Now, I, what's interesting is when, that's, when that system kind of breaks down, then you get like managers who exist in a system... And instead of solving problems, they just tr- try to prevent the problems from occurring in the first place, mm-hmm. which is code for getting pe- like trying to do nothing at all. Oh, I see. That's I like, see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Why rock yeah. the boat? Why bite off new problems? Yeah. Why bite off new initiatives? If no one's asking for this, we can just because then then you have no accountability because you weren't trying anything in the first you're place. Just coasting. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I've uh, I've known a number of those kinds of managers over my work career, both yeah, like both in like retail and all the way up food service. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I kind of get it, I guess. No one likes to work. Jobs are hard. Um, but at the same time, I'm just like, dang. Once, once you have other people that depend is a strong word, but are connected to you for their career growth and their job opportunities and their satisfaction in their jobs, to, to just be like, yeah, I'm not going to do anything. And, like, if you have any problems, I'll just swoop in, have a 10-minute conversation, and tell myself that all the problems are fixed. and fix that again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can't. Don't. Not a big fan of that. What about, uh, well, I, I'm curious to hear Kraken's perspective because you've been you've been running your own business for years. Yeah, I've now. never really had a manager. Yeah, no, um, no. The closest thing I guess you can call me, I mean, I would say teachers, but like I think oh, that's a, a yeah. different different kind of responsibility. Um, yeah, I mean, you have you. I would say you personally have to manage a bunch of different people on a daily basis because whether or not it's people you're working with or people you're working for or whatever else, I don't know. I'm not sure how you see it. Yeah, no, I definitely do. I think that's been part of my skill set since a really young age. Just from ex- like, what the hell is that? Hot air balloon lifting Hot a burning balloon ladder. Lifting a burning ladder. Awesome. That's pretty crazy. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't so know why I would do that. But <laughs> yeah, I don't. This is the cool visual, I guess. Um, yeah, no, it's it's been cool. I think the 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 real thing that I learned from doing this over time is like valuing everyone's individual skill and what they're really good at, and then helping them to the fullest potential of that and then kind of finding a way they can share that with others. And so, you know, what we've kind of done with this online community that like I've helped kind of foster in my discord of like a bunch of different creators is like we we've tried to have, you know, if you have a really passionate idea for something, you can come forward and suggest it. And if it resonates with people, then we get like a whole crew to come together and like, we'll try to bring it to life. And so, the few projects that we have been able to pull off with that have been really satisfying and I think have made people feel really kind of creatively fulfilled. Um, They're really hard though, right? They are hard, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that, yeah. that people don't see. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely felt I felt some of the most fulfilled doing that sort of stuff, so I want to do more of that. Um, it's always a, it's a good feeling in general, I think, as a human to get other humans together and, and watch what happens, like where you, you all get to do something teamwork. Team, you know, with a lot of teamwork, and I like—I've always liked that feeling. That's the way humans work. Humans are social, um, mm-hmm. and they're supposed to work together, uh, and that's why humanity is at where it's at now because of teamwork, not because of one dude, you know. Yeah, so, totally. Uh, or one woman. So it's uh, its i don't know. It's really—it's. I think it's cool. Um, I think it's really neat that when you can get all together and everybody sort of goes towards one objective, and then 
Yeah, it succeeds or it fails. I, even when it fails, it's neat. So, so you're saying Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to be awful? What? No. <laughs> oh, there's another. There's some other visionary we haven't met yet that's already. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, on that one. I can't. To some degree, I, I trust the the corporate system. It wouldn't just put some asshole in charge of the company. So I'm sure the game will be fine. No, and also, billions of dollars rest on yeah, that. Yeah. And all the talent that they've cultivated and, and it seems like are pretty good at retaining. Speaks to a pretty good and sustainable work, work culture. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think what the the interesting thing to think about in, in terms of to bring it back to Dan Hauser is the worst thing would be for him to lose passion at the job or lose endurance and keep trying to work it anyway. Oh yeah, because that's yeah. when it all oh it gets real bad. Then they get um, resentful mm-hmm. or like and they, they start they, taking it out on their employees and, and they also don't want to work as hard. I, there's lots of there are lots of problems with that, and I'm sure Dan Hauser knows that. He's been a, mm. been a co-founder and a CEO or whatever he was for years and years and years. So. He's aware, um, and I'm sure that's why he left. Oh, Iceman writes, When I was a telemarketer, the managers would play shuffleboard while we were on the phone. That's the best. <laughs> Having a recreational activity with an earshot of people who are working. <laughs> that was a machinima. Yeah. yeah. Ping pong table machinima. Uh, that's, oh, boy. We God, were, I can imagine that. We would be, I mean, like, the, one, of our, one of the favorite stories that we always tell is <laughs> we would work late every Friday because we had to put videos up on the weekends. Mm-hmm. But... Um, some Fridays, Machinima would throw a party. It was called First Friday, and they used to do it at bars, which was cool. Yeah. But then they cheaped it out, cheaped out, and then started doing it at Machinima. But what they would do is like shut down work at three, and be like, "All right, everybody, let's go fucking party!" And then everybody would drink at the office, and we'd be there working late. And people would like come in our office, and be like, "What the fuck are you guys doing? What Get on work? out of here! Yeah, you want you want a shot?" And we're like, "No, dude, we got to finish these videos." Um, oh god! Yeah, that was that was, and that's, that's like painful. it's particu- it like rubs salt in the wound type thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially considering that company was clearly going down. <laughs> no. We were the only ones that. I mean, I get. In retrospect, I guess it was good for our careers to keep keep at it. Absolutely, yeah. Man, well, when ev- when everyone around you doesn't care, that's when it's tough to like <laughs> try to find it within yourself. Mm-hmm. Like they clearly didn't care. Um, man, was that uh, a picture of you, Craig? <laughs> nice. <laughs> See, I don't own a, a fedora, fedora or a, a trilby or whatever you want to call it. Oh man, the greasy. You know this. Out. I know that about Craig. Craig is Craig is the coolest dude in the world. I'm the coolest dude. When he arrived at my house, he finger gunned me. He went like this. Finger guns are cool. He went like this. I have a whole emote for them. Uh, it was then that was very cool. Um, I was I gotta say. Wait, wait if you spend channel points to put the little think gun under the finger gun. Oh yeah. Ooh. Like? Someone do that. Then you got three. Greasy got one point eight k. Hold on a second. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to modify a single emote. Let me... Uh, Where are the, there they are. Yeah. And then bang. Oh, no. oh God. He's <laughs> like holding the hand. He's you helping. You can't move it, can you? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. It's a triple. <laughs> <laughs> you got a friend. It's teamwork, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I spent your channel points without asking. But. Hey, you know what? It's all right. I got plenty on, on your channel. Too. Yeah. I'm going to redeem those later. I'm going to... Well, hold on a minute, Bruce. Um, because, so based on what we talked about, about doing the, the uh, CyberWatch thing... Absolutely, yeah. I got I to gotta figure out how to do a uh, transparent video on top of OBS without crashing encoders. But mm. um, I know how to. I know where the link is. I just got to do it. But once I do, Bruce, mm-hmm. and this was actually somebody in my chat came up with this. I think it was Zaxby. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to add something for either like 250 or 500 thousand channel points. Ooh. Where when you redeem it, it'll do like a, a roulette wheel, and you either get VIP or you get banned. Oh, that's great! That's a great idea. It's a that's super fun. great idea. Yeah. I love so it. I'm absorbing it. Actually, people mentioned Kraken that you do. You know how to integrate with channel points. Oh, I just I added one. That was really oh, like okay. a throwaway one. But I there's been an ongoing thing in my chat where. Um, I was playing Subnautica, and at some point, everyone just kept spanning the Ocean Man oh, yeah, copypasta. Right, yes. And so one of my mods decided to make Ocean Man a banned word. And so for the last, like, three years, you could not say this phrase and for no reason. And so everyone, <laughs> when they wanted to get timed out, would just say it and throw themselves oh. into the void. <laughs> um, and so it. that was, like, the tradition. And so now I added... Should for 100,000 channel points... Should I time them out? Oh, I can't. Well, so here's the thing. So for 100,000... Make me a mod! Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. For 100,000 channel points, um, you can toggle the ocean ban on or off. So... Wait, how, so wait, can they awesome. do it or do you do it? They do it. So they... Well, they spend the money and then I go and then turn it off. Then you go and do it. Yes, okay. but 100,000 is a lot. Didn't know so, it was automated. That's no, actually no. a super great idea. Yeah, so finally... And then uh, that opens does up someone do it? Yeah, someone did it. So now everyone can say it. Eventually, someone will uh, toggle, it toggle it off, and yeah. then you can't say it anymore. So, 
Yeah. I gotta rack up those channel points. That's yeah, really that's fun. It. That's, start the, saving up. that's the purpose. <laughs> just leave it. Just leave it going while you're. Oh, we got, we got yeah. some copy pops. Get your for Ocean get your Man. chuckles out now, guys, because it's not gonna last forever. I know. Oh, Ocean Man's completely allowed and actually invited in my chat when oh, people boy. spam it. Just, Careful what you wish for. It's no problem. As, as after I unbanned it. I, my chat was unreadable for like the next two hours oh! of the stream. <laughs> they did, they did it. Flashy Foss. Oh my Flashy god. Flashy Foss redeemed Toggle Ocean Band. Okay, well, bring it, up, bring it up. All right, I'm doing it right now. Right. I can't believe we're Craig, doing it on we're stream. We're going to do it on okay. stream. Also, Flashy, Five. I saw your messages. Thank you. Get the chuckles out now. Oh, they didn't? No, you're right. They did a slash oh, that's me. Bullshit. Oh, that's bullshit. Oh, oh, you tricked, you tricked so Lawrence. Close. And Lawrence got me. I just wanted you to turn it on. Gooses, you're more than allowed. You keep doing the Ocean Man as much as you want. You put it up in the chat. I love it. Ocean Man's my favorite. My favorite. Do you know you know about Ocean Man? I have I, I have she not taught me about, about Ocean Man. Okay. I actually learned about yeah, Ocean Man. I gotta Man play Subnautica so bad. Oh my god, Subnautica is I think my favorite survival game of all time. So this is something that I've been. I guess this might be a little too uh, how the sausage is made, but I love. I typically as a, as a gamer, uh, both <laughs> I am prejudiced. So that I'll just get that out of the way right away. Mm -hmm. But I typically like to play a huge variety of games. I'll like have five or six games that I rotate through at any given time. I feel like that's really not a good approach for Twitch though. People mm. seem to really like attaching you with one game mm. for a bit, and then maybe once you finish that or move on, then you switch to something else. I don't know. It is it is weird. I've I've had uh, I go back and forth on this too, mm -hmm. where like because like Ninja would never have gotten as big as he did if he hadn't played Fortnite, right? Yeah. Um, and I mean like and Ninja's a great gamer. Always had. I'm mean, like he really honestly is. He's he's very very good at games in general. <laughs> Aster, that is some top level trolling, my man. You redeemed uh, the message for six hundred forty. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. <laughs> almost so has to almost um but but i mean like he wouldn't have gotten as big as he had if he hadn't played the biggest game in the world um and played it all the time and that's that's kind of the, one of those things where like if and i thought about this it's like man if i were streaming and like game like apex legends came out that i actually really enjoyed would i then play apex legends just for go hard months? yeah like yeah i don't know that i could do that i don't i mean yeah. like i could try i could most certainly try but i don't know that i could do that over and over and over and People say that you're not going to blow up, you're not going to go viral if you're not playing the biggest game in the world, like Tarkov or Fortnite or whatever else. But um, you are going to have fall-offs. So, like, just like uh, Ninja did, where, like, he had the whole Drake thing, not that all exploded, and then he took a break for three days or whatever and lost 400,000 subscribers or something like that. Like, that's, what, that's what's going to happen. No one's going to stick with you because they don't, they don't, you know, they don't like your personality. So it's, it's a gamble. Mm -hmm. It's a gamble on whether or not you're going to go viral, or well, you're not going to keep them all, but you're going to keep some. You're going to keep some. I mean, and then you, that you're probably still going to net ahead than yeah. if you were bouncing all over the place, that's, right? Uh, probably. I mean, that's but that's only if you go as viral as Ninja. Mm. Well, I look at yeah. like like Moon Moon or Eris, like chasing the puddle. They got big off of like Overwatch, uh, Overwatch and fighting games, respectively. Um, actually, I guess Eris probably kind of more of his personality, I guess, really wrote him wrote him up. But Moon Moon kept a lot of that, and he's he's just kind of playing whatever these days. Are you yeah. as, are you that good at Overwatch though? <laughs> I'm, <sighs> no, uh, no, and and but but that has started me down like a thought process of like, well, what I, am I gonna get at? So maybe maybe I'll become the premier Twitch Tetris ninety nine player, Bruce. I mean, you could. Why yeah. not? Why, Why not? not? Here's the thing: you better settle in because it'll be about six months of Tetris ninety nine. Yeah, I don't know if I like that or I'm terrified of that. I'm mean, I'm like I'm not terrified of it. If you really like Tetris ninety nine, you could probably play it a lot, but. That much? Oh, yeah, I could just watch hentai on stream. Jesus, easy. <laughs> I'm done. There's so oh, much of it, too. I never told you guys about... Okay, I had an idea for a really fucked up... A really sweet porn? ...stream idea. Oh. Um, Hell yeah. Well, actually, first, on that earlier note, I wanted to comment that I think variety streaming is the only way to really feel... Well, I don't want to say only, but for most streamers that I've talked to, variety is almost necessary to feel content streaming as a career long time. Because you can change you know, Yeah, a lot. you can yeah. do what you want, and like I, I've tried to always mix it up so I'm not playing the same game more than like three days in a row, mm -hmm. um, which might be counter to growth. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't really thought about it that much. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like If you really want to just grow and get an audience, then going hardcore into one community is a really good way of kind of penetrating that and getting a lot of yeah. new viewers but then, you know, retaining them from your personality, that needs to be done through a lot of kind of, like, slow stepping and you know, opening them up to new experiences through, like, same genre games and then eventually, you know, different genre games, mm -hmm. talk shows, like, it's a it's an ongoing thing. Um, switching gears back to the hentai thing you mentioned. <laughs> um, I had an idea for a stream, which I don't even know if, I don't know if it even qualifies as TOS. 
So this is a question. Oh, I can't wait. Um, Absolutely does. I want to do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. in. I'm in. I I wanted. I was thinking it would be funny to stream where you had a monitor. You know, like how you can have like a multi monitor setup. Mm -hmm. You have a monitor up top that is uh, the cops are already on. <laughs> um, you can have a monitor up top and you put up there a like nonstop porn feed. Ah. And so you, you just, just react to it. And you just have it muted. And you try to do your stream as normal, where. It, like you're doing a display Ugh. capture of Gross. your main screen, and the entire time there's just the worst shit possible. Why would like you do filtering that, your face. Why? It's a challenge, man. That's the worst. People want challenge. challenges. I like the reactions would be strong, but like, I there's something interesting about uh, curiosity of like you think it would engage in and, and, and attract people, but then people just really, really, really want to know what it is, and they get really frustrated if they can't. So if you're like, oh, oh, why there? Then everybody's gonna be like, oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? And they're gonna try to figure it out. Well, so and then. You can't link out. You to can't that. wear your glasses either. People you can't, can't see that reflection. Yeah. Well, you can't. Link I mean, out you to could, that. but then they won't see it well enough, and they're just like, "Oh, I saw a leg." <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't link out to that feed, though. I don't think on Twitch, like being like, "Here's what I'm watching." Oh no, no, no! Like, you would oh, never, you would never do that. People, what I guess would be fun is like you gave people hints, and then they tried to time your reactions by what happens in the show and figure out what you're watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Um, I <laughs> let's do it. I'm gonna so as as. Kind of, I guess, is what related to previous topic is I'm grinding through Witcher 3, which is fucking awesome. I love that game. And as I'm going, I'm peppering in like more and more ridiculous mods, which also figuring out that Witcher 3 can be a bit of a bitch to mod. Um, but figuring it out. Anyway, I want to start peppering in some horny mods, get some like... Mm. The trick is... Hell yeah. Boy, it's a... It's, hmm, there's not a whole lot of like... I'm going to say a tasteful horny mods. No, there's no... It's typically just... <laughs> tasteful. <laughs> they're, they're made by gamers. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually... I will say, Dragon Age Origins has a fair amount. I mean, they've got m many horny mods, but the horny mods are usually in the in the form of a romance scene that they added. Yeah, yeah. But they also are like hard boning romance oh, scene yeah. added. Um, <laughs> but there are the funniest mod that I've seen because I did a lot. I did a fair bit of modding for Dragon Age leading up to my series with it, um, and the one that I couldn't add is, of course, the nudity mod where if you're stripped down. Uh, of course, there's no underwear. You're just kind of full on. This is a dick. Yeah, full on dick. Oh, I got two stories actually about nudity mods. Um, so this one was uh, my viewers told me there's a scene in the DLC for uh, for Dragon Age where you go back to the place of the first battle. And spoiler alert: the uh, the king you first meet in the beginning of the game has like 50 death flags in his dialogue. He's like, we'll talk about that after the battle. Like, huh, I never uh, thought of it that way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know, you might actually be a great leader one day and then just fucking, of course, dies. And then he dies. Yeah, so he's dead. We all knew that was coming. Um, but if you go back to the place where that battle happened uh, to, recover his, ghost. <laughs> to recover his corpse, oh. uh, the enemies who are basically like goblins and trolls have like propped him up on a cross like Jesus where he's like stuck out like with like things all over him oh. but he's also naked and so if you have the naked oh, mod the camera no. just pans down from his head to his crotch and there's just a straight on full heart on dick <laughs> just the full picture of the screen sorry were you, were you streaming it? no 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 oh, I, I didn't okay. have the mod enabled I mean that wouldn't necessarily run afoul of Twitch's TV well it's, it's a true. mod it's a mod you downloaded well even so. still you're not like it's, I think it would. Because I think you can get a peener shot in. You just can't have it. Like my understanding is that like you can have sex. Maybe you can't just show straight intercourse. You can have nudity. No, well, Witcher sex is fun uh, yeah. on Twitch. Yeah, it is fun. Just if a you're not, what, what I what I what my mods actually checked into was that if you are calling attention to it, meaning yeah. like playing it over and over, yeah. like, whoa, check out his if dick. You're, if you're focusing if, on if, it, if, but, well, that's if it's in the base game. If you're modding it in, modding oh, then oh, that's not that, okay. That oh. might be a little. Oh, that's thing. interesting. Yeah, because yeah. it shows intent to show nudity. Oh, that's yeah, like, that, that makes total sense. Yeah, <laughs> and you're yeah, you're dialing up more nudity that was in the original creator's intent. Yes, exactly. With the art, okay. Um, hmm. It, hmm. There is, I would argue, a, another side of this argument, and I discovered this the hard way uh, through. Um, a good friend of mine, Inferno Plus, uh, made the mod uh, Cursed Halo, um, which you might have seen on YouTube. Uh, he's actually got a new mod coming out this Friday that I was going to invite you guys to try out. Whoa! Um, yeah, so that's that's coming in uh, two days. Um, but his old mod um, had a D20 grenade, where when you throw this D20 grenade, um, it does a random effect. It can be a nuke that kills everyone on the map. It can be literally growing a tree. It can be spa spawning a flying warthog. It can be spawning civilians that just run around and get killed. It's like a ton of things. Okay. But the the one that I didn't know existed until 
It happened? It happened on stream, was you throw the grenade, and it just spawns something shadowing the distance, and I'm like, what is that? And I get closer until it's lit up, and it's a, a full-on 3D model of Thanos with oh. a giant horse cock, just like fucking between his legs, posing like this. <laughs> and I just see that on, on screen and scream and spin the camera around, and it was uh, terrifying. So, hey, But you weren't banned. Though. That's good. I wasn't banned. It was that's shadowy important. enough. It was in the that's distance important. enough. That's important. Uh, he didn't tell me exactly it was coming. So I had no idea it was in the mod. But right. um, I'm glad that you're still here. I as far I mean maybe Twitch didn't see it, so now I'm just I'm well, outing you myself. Call attention. You yeah. should delete the VOD. There is a clip of this somewhere, I think. Oh, uh, okay. right. Which I probably should delete I mean, also. It, but it seems like he reacted appropriately. Yeah. That, that's another thing. I think Twitch will generally be nice. I know there's a lot of people that say Twitch is like, oh my gosh, you're so unfair with their TOS, blah blah blah. And I'm, yes, to a certain extent they are, but Generally, if you show remorse, yeah, like you didn't mean to. I didn't like focus on. I didn't like go up and be like, "Wow, look at that!" Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. as soon as I noticed, <laughs> see all the veins. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. To get uh, someone, uh, I guess this might be a bit of a shift here, but I saw someone in, in my chat wondering, imploring the wisdom of uh, of intelligent young men, which I think we have here in spades. Okay. <laughs> that was a fart sound. I've gotten no, that's, that's a didgeridoo. Okay, I've gotten eight spam calls today. Oh no! Yeah, I've, I've started adding them to my block list. It's weird. Well, the like, real question is, why is your phone not on silent? Pal? Because it never rings. Sorry, okay, go ahead. Go, yeah. ahead. go ahead, Lawrence. I uh, yeah, I, I was getting a ton, but they were actually coming from the same numbers, which is rare. So you might want to look at your call. I've gotten all walk. different numbers. All okay. Today. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Why? Why would a man, strong, young, attractive man, mm. ghost on a uh, a young lady? What's it meaning like if just not, young, like like Tinder just or completely stop responding, yeah. Because there's another person in the picture, generally. Ah. That I mean like that's almost always the answer. That's a lot of it. It yeah. is very rare that somebody's ghosting you and they're ghosting you because they're just they're like done with you. Usually it's because there's somebody else. They feel guilty. Uh, and they either that or they're or they've just moved they've moved to the next stage with the yeah, other person. And they don't feel like it's worth And and like for me, when I was dating three years ago or whatever it was I actually went out of my way to text people and be like, "Yeah, hey, I'm letting you know, like, I'm starting to date this person, so I'm sorry, uh, and whatever." And then people would get mad, or people would be like, "Okay, or whatever." But at least I, like, I, because I didn't want to get ghosted, so yep. I tried to treat people sure. with the same respect. <laughs> so um, I did something similar, and I actually got like, "Well, thank you for letting me know." Yeah, and I was like, "Well, oh, awesome, okay." Yeah, no, so I mean, and people do that. So they'll, they'll be like, "Oh, thank you, thanks for telling me." You know, like then that's closure or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. But I don't, I'm trying to think about the reasons why somebody would ghost someone else. They get busy. When I've when, yeah. when I've had that situation, oh. I've like just not had any space to think about it. Um, yeah. The thing that I would, afterwards. I guess speaking from the perspective of somebody that, that might happen to, how often would you say it has to do with something that they have done or said or expressed? Like uh, you have a conversation and then there's like red flags that hit somebody mm -hmm. and they're just like, man, fuck it, I'm done with that. Um, Cause it's I've interesting. had that happen before, like, too. Okay, because the two examples you brought up are more on the person who's doing the ghosting and not the person who got ghosted, yeah. which is interesting. I, I feel like if that happened to me, I would I would own that a little more. I'd be like, oh, I must have messed up or something. Yeah. But that's that's not a healthy way to approach. It's, uh, well, it's because Crichton sent that Thanos cock picture yeah. <laughs> over and over. Yeah, they don't respond after that. I don't know why. <laughs> it's such a big dick, though. It's impressive. Why, what, what do you... I love Thanos' butt. <laughs> it's so cute. He does have a good butt. And that's we all agree about not that. sexual. Tie it back to what we started with. Wait, it's not? Wait, it's not? No, I just think he's got a cute butt. I don't want to stick anything in it. Oh, okay. Plus, Sounds he like it might be attracted to it. Yeah, you still be I attracted mean, to it without sticking something in it. It's not bad looking at, but I don't, I don't want to have sex with it. <laughs> well, you know, never actually, you know. Yeah, his dick's so big, so balanced. <laughs> <laughs> Blazy. So balanced. Nice job. Nice job. When do you need to leave? I know you need to go soon. Yeah, I got uh, about 10, 15 minutes. Oh, hey, it's Gus. It's Gus. It's baby Gus. Gus is on Reddit. With his naked Gus next to him for some reason. <laughs> He's got a lot of those, doesn't he? He does. It's mostly just the one of him with his legs crossed. Yeah, I love beer. it. It's my favorite. It's a really good one. Oh, and there's also the one of him in the fire. I've just I've seen more pictures of him without clothes than with clothes, I think. Well, that's because Gus is a funny man and he knows he's funny. Mm. So he's really good at taking funny pictures. Oh, yes. He's really, really good at it. Um... How did everyone feel about the whole baby peanut thing? I don't know if you saw the commercial. I didn't. I didn't watch it. It's okay. kind of ba baby nut. I mean, it's kind of masterful marketing, isn't it? It's the first big, like, big brand. Well, big is the wrong word. 
Like, but it's the first, like, I guess, ancient brand that actually managed to reinvent its image in the modern ecosystem of internet. Yeah, humor. it's just copying Baby Yoda. That's that, what, that's as soon the, as Baby Yoda came out, they're like, "That's what Autumn said. We got to do that," and yeah. they just fucking. But it's working. Made that their whole. I mean, it's sure it's working, but I'm you, just annoyed. I bet you tweeted about hashtag Baby Nut. I didn't actually. I'm about to. I have a, a, a killer tweet already lined up for it. <laughs> just you wait. Because my last one went viral. I don't know if you saw. I don't know, Wait, why did you scroll away? What are you looking at? I was looking at this. It's Bojack. Uh, in season two, they break the discount art store. Wait, unless this is not Bojack. It is. Yeah. It's on our Bojack portal. They had, uh, you know, like the famous poker picture, but the dogs are colorblind, so they don't know who's winning. In, uh... Oh, so the grid uh... has like two examples of people winning? <laughs> yeah. That's cute. I've I watched just, the most recent I'm a big season. fan of Bojack. I haven't yeah. watched the most recent season. Have you? Huh. Um, I am almost, I'm like halfway through it. Um, but yeah, Bojack is fantastic. Bojack. I've only seen like the first three episodes, but I enjoyed them. Bojack, Bojack's first season, I think, I think it gets is, a lot better. It's not very good. Yeah. I actually oh, think I even still liked it. I think it's like, eh. and then uh, as it goes on, it becomes more serious, and it just feels more of like a not even a drama, but it's more of like a um, tragic comedy. Mm. Uh, it's good. It's really good. I'm into it. Yeah, it's really really. No, good. it's that's exactly my thing. I'm so <laughs> ah. Oh, that's Grant Gustin. That's the Flash. Um, I have finished part four of JoJo. Uh, the only there's only one there's part five left apparently that it's not on Hulu oh. and I will not be paying any money to pay, to watch it so mm. um, I'll I'll pick up the, the DVDs for you and you can hit me back Bruce. Uh, yeah I was gonna say do you want to somebody want to lend me that whatever because somebody's like crunchy rolls like nope I'm not paying for it you can use the uh, the Blu-ray rental service that operates out of Ohio that I use oh for anime yeah why don't you it's, use crunchy roll uh, because they don't have Dragon Ball Z Kai nobody does got it. you got to buy it on disc that's yeah. it Funimation rules I see. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting it one disc at a time. Almost done with the Cell Saga. Who can say what's going to happen? It's all up in the air now, Bruce. Now they're talking about anime again for yep. our, you love our anime. audio listeners. You love anime. There was actually a pretty good uh, anime headline this week. There was a, a Funimation outright canceled the series because it was getting too anime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too, did they say that? It was too anime? Uh, yeah, you might want to look up their wording, but that's essentially, that. The, if you read between the lines, that's essentially what it is. There was a show where okay, someone maybe I got someone back posted the, the clip and then got timed out by my auto. Immediately autobot. deleted. <laughs> oh, from the show? No, of they Thanos posted stick. a clip from oh, the Thanos okay. thing. Nice. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, uh, so to 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 set the stage, there is something in it. Ah! Oh, no, 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 um, so there's there's something in anime called Monster Girls, right? We've had like, we've had uh, guns that turn into girls. We've had World War II battleships that turn into girls. Yeah. We have? Yeah, of course. Girls front. I know this. It's a whoa. I've seen that. Yeah. Um, so now there are Monster Girls, which is like traditional traditional like fairy tale monsters, your hippogriffs, your lamias, what have you. But it's cute anime girls. Um, so there is a show, uh, Interspecies Reviewer, I believe it's called. Where uh, basically there are uh, how to call there are brothels that stalk various monster girls, mm-hmm. and then there are people who go to those brothels and bang those monster girls. All right, and then they review their services. This uh-huh. is a show or a hentai? It's a show, uh, or it might be a hentai. I don't. I think it's straddled the line a little too hard. <laughs> okay. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Very excited, but it got removed from uh, from Funimation and Crunchyroll. So I don't. This is a hentai. Is it? It sounds like it. I don't know how you could not make this end. Uh, I'm throwing this one to chat. You guys got to catch me up on this because I haven't, uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't partaken myself yet. <laughs> this, this, I didn't realize this is a meme. Now. Oh, that's, that's great. Oh man, those rotary <laughs> engines—you can't kill them. They just don't die. Um, uh, they stop showing. Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, they stop showing it. Be- ah, stay. Ah. Stop. Okay. They were showing the censored version, and everyone was going to the other sites for the uncensored. Oh, version. really? That, yeah. So I was. That's what I was that sounds like a different sort of narrative than maybe. Well, they didn't. They say it like didn't ma- match their standards for anime or whatever. Uh, maybe. It <laughs> Why would they stop it showing like, it? It's, not, it's like if you're making something that is like half hentai, half not. Yeah, it's called etchy. Thank it's you. It's just both sides are going to be left wanting. You know? That's not true at all. Some people enjoy the titillation. All right, Lawrence. Some people do enjoy the titillation, <laughs> but then they end up just masturbating. Yeah, so. and then they get they get it over with. Nah, once you watch enough of it, then they tune into a out. Bruce stream and they just get it over with. Yeah. <laughs> My streams have never been about masturbation. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And I discourage masturbation unless it is purely for prostate for health. Yes. Prostate. Prostate health. health. Prostate okay. health. Okay. All right. I've heard that if you do not exercise the prostate regularly, 
It is bad for it, and that's, you may get prostate. It's that's real why humor you, philosophy, Bruce. You, he's you're you're like you're like the martyr. You're taking on all of these unwanted uh, once a day four humors on you once a day, and happening to be exactly during the time slot of your of your stream. That's right. Does it happen? Okay, we understand. Uh, I also just started my Hero Academia. I only watched the first episode. Oh, uh-huh. that's um, a great series. And if it play, if it plays out like all of other anime, I'll love the first five, hate the next thirteen. And then uh, love the last five, so I'm looking forward to it. Wow, <laughs> There's, it, it maintains pace okay. I, I okay. can't stand freaking Deku Crybaby. That's one of the only enemies I've seen. He, I he's the main character. Yeah, I, I, so whenever he's on the screen, I'm like, Ugh, and I like fast forward. I think because I just want to get to the other cool shit. Uh, the world is cool. Do you I not like, like, like aspirational idea. characters that are like not when they just keep crying? Like he doesn't just, have a quirk. Kraken? Yeah, I'll fucking find one or just just get over it already. <laughs> it's just like constantly crying. He gets he, he has moments where he actually changes as a character. He doesn't cry as much as the show goes on. Um, there's still elements of that. Though. No spoilers in the chat. Yeah, Lawrence no spoilers. Chat. Jeez, Jeez, come on! I don't even know who that character is. You're trying to spoil it. Wait, what do they spoil? Oh, I don't, oh. I don't know what it is. I don't want to know. What are you even talking? About? Did you, that's not? He's not even right. <laughs> also, they're they're really. <laughs> Honestly, spoilers in the anime don't even really count. No. I, like, you know what the fuck's going to yeah, happen if when you he, first start watching the show. Well, like, they telegraph it 20 yeah. episodes previous. Because it's it's all comfort food. Uh, well, I take that back. There are there are some animes. At, Attack on Titan is not. Yeah. That's why I love Attack on Titan. Because it's like, out of the blue, it starts like throwing lore at you that you didn't know existed. And if you and then if you go back and watch the show, the show or think about it, you're like, holy shit, that all plays in to what they did. It was really cool. Yeah, Ghost Absolutely. in the Shell is, is real solid. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, actually, like a show that has great writing that you really have to pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, most of it is... I mean, same ratio applies to everything in life. 99% of it is trash. Um, <laughs> trash. Basically. Uh, I watched Interspecies Reviewer for you, and they use hot dogs to F a monster girl. Hmm. Okay. They, they watched it for you. Well, all right. Austin. I asked him Austin to. Says they I asked watched... him to, to go and give me a report. Right. Austin, you're over 18. Aren't you just say yes, please? Oh, he, he is. He is. I've oh, met him in person. Oh, met, okay. I've met him in person. That's that's a good tattoo. No, it's not. Wait, it's not a good that? tattoo, but I'm happy yeah. it exists. <laughs> that's delightful. It's like driving on a spaceship. Oh, it's yeah. like Men in Black. Right? I guess it God, is. God, that'd be so unsettling like, during I guess sex it is. or something. Yeah, Can you imagine? A... This, little, this little meat body being piloted by a, a man. <laughs> With a no, giant I, head? I would never have sex with this man anyways. That's true. But I'm just, you know, I'm an empathetic person. I can put, <laughs> I can put my uh, imagination in other things. Do you have any tattoos, Kraken? No. I've thought about getting them, but I haven't Lawrence, what do you cared about right? anything enough Not to yet. get a tattoo of it. I, uh, I basically, like, uh, it's, it's a fitness goal for me. If I get my body to, like, the shape yeah. that I want, then I will celebrate by adorning it with art. We all need to dye our hair blue. Yes. Oh. Like a streamer. And I thought you were going to go, like, get a bunch of Like a streamer. Like a streamer. Oh, my God. Can you imagine... What? Just all of us with blue hair going into tattoos? Yeah. Like, yeah, I can. We can make Jesus. content out of it. It's we'll all be on our phones. The greatest night ever. I'll wear my goggles. My, my, oh, my, my goggles. goggles. Yeah. yeah, you can get some like, you can get like a big brass gear tattooed over your heart because it means so much to you. Well, <laughs> oh, God. It works like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's the machinery that drives my, my heart is yeah. a cog. Oh, my God. What, uh, what would you get tattooed, Dragon? Uh, if anything. Now you don't have to say you don't have to say like you say something that you thought about. You don't you don't have to say you, what you're gonna get. Uh, some sort of some sort of goofy oh. little little face or or like icon or character. Oh okay. I don't know. I, I I play so many characters. I think I would get something that feels like it's representative of. People keep saying Edward. 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 Yeah. I'm not getting Edward. Jesus Christ. Edward. It's like a rotting tomato. <laughs> don't know, just get on my my fucking shin. I don't know what Edward is. He's but... uh my icon in Discord, and oh. he's like. The character oh, yeah. I made for Dark Souls. Yeah, he's yeah. like this red. There's that little guy. He's like the smiley oh, little. <laughs> red oh, that's character. who that is. He's yeah. a nightmare. Okay. I've seen him in your like your startup animations yeah. and stuff. Yeah, right he's uh, he's someone. He's a literal nightmare. Lawrence, what about you? Uh, I have two, two, I, well, three now. Um, one is from the the there's a series Mother, which is just JRPGs. Yeah. Um, Mother Two or Earthbound in America it meant a lot to me when I was growing up. So there you go. This, the logo Mother, though, the O is like a planet. Mm. It's like a two-tone planet, so we just get that planet somewhere. That's cool. Um, there's the logo for Final Fantasy IV also has amazing artwork of like a dude in armor like holding his arm out. So that'd be cool. Four is not, a, not super my favorite, but uh, that logo is super cool. And then I also wanted to get something like cyberpunk-y. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but 
I don't know. I don't know about that. I thought about like getting some kind of like circuitry shit with just like one little That'd like cool. line that's coming up, yeah. but I've been told by people who know that do not get a neck tattoo in any mm. in any case. In any regard, no matter what, if you're not that kind of person. Well you can't yeah. hide it. It would always be there. That's, but it yeah. also it, it like having neck tattoos is a certain class of person that I am not. <laughs> I've never stabbed somebody, so. <laughs> but you could. You could. I, you, yeah, start you know what? I, right as I go into the tattoo part. Yeah, you're like. Choo, choo. All right, here's the knife. Do me up. I don't know what I would get. I really. Yeah. Don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know that there's anything that means that much get to the, me. Get the get the little like chili from Chipotle. You think that guy's? <laughs> I know. Something? I know. <laughs> Leaning too much into the image. Then. Um, get a, Bruce, get a real big fish logo, Bruce. Man, ah, I, 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 man, I regret that immediately. As soon as I got it put on my body, if anybody got any Scott tattoos, they immediately regret it. I, I promise you that. I don't think there's anybody out there that's like, I am so glad I got that scott tattoo 20 years ago. You love Scott. You could get just a checkerboard yeah, over do, your whole face. I love Bruce. lots of things. I love just Star put lots Wars. of things on your body. I love Star Wars, I don't know that I'd ever put anything Star yes, Wars on. Yes, put a body. Yoda. Coward. <laughs> Yoda. <laughs> just put a Yoda. Put a Yoda there. there. I hope they really pull a like Game of Thrones with Baby Yoda. Like he just turns super evil at some point. I hope. So everyone buying the There's merch no and getting There's the no tattoos. Way. There's no way. Yeah. Uh, Daner's Targaryen ring a bell. How about th- how about this? Uh, if we get fifty thousand subs, I'll do JoJo uh, Kanji on my arm. Sick. Oh, like the the. It's just any one of them. Fifty thousand. The Give menacing me there. menacing Kanji. I, I like setting these goals really really high because they they'll never do it. They'll never do it. I want that shit, dude. We could be menacing bros. We could pose together. Jojo Kanji? Yeah, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> you want to do it with I mean, us? wait, 50,000 subs. No. You know what I'll do with us? I'll get the tears of Deku on my fucking <laughs> face. Well, he's got a logo, right? It's like the little bunny ears. Ah. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get that far. He I'm stops only, crying at a certain point. I've only watched the one episode. Not that you have to, I'm but... Only, I've only watched the my one. My heroes, it's... I mean, it's, it's essentially a... It's, one, it's it, one punch. It's a carbon copy of Naruto, actually. It's, oh, okay, it's like right. kids with magical powers in school, and they all have like different powers and different visual stylings. But they're in school, so they have tests, and they have. But then the bad guys come in during the test, and it's like it's it's beat for beat, nearly exactly the same show. It's also every CW show. Every That's CW true. show is exactly yeah. that. They all have superpowers, but they also have to like make out with their girlfriend, mm-hmm. and that and then there causes problems. So yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's a Spider-Man formula, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except uh, except Deku don't don't mess with no trifling hoes. He's all about just hero work. Except, no, wait, never mind. There's that one weightless girl. <laughs> never mind. Urara, whatever her name is. I don't know. I've only watched the first Ochako, episode. Ochako, you guys know. Come on. Do you need to go? Oh, I, no. yeah. It looks I, like you're getting ready to go, so go, go ahead. I got a jet. Um, you're going to miss my uh, my energy drink sponsor, Kraken. Well, do it as I leave. Okay. <laughs> so he doesn't listen. Yeah, that way he won't be able to outbid me for another sponsorship. Again. Is that what happened last time? I think so. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's that kind of. I told you. you by not, by not engaging, they want you more than if you were to engage. <sighs> I'm still gonna stick to my strategy. Actually, um, it's not working yet. But what is going on there? I think it's in Red Dead. Yeah. yeah oh, it's in, it's in Red Dead. They found it in Red Dead. Bleh. It's, oh, it's like an whoa. alien. It's really cool. It's really, I love that. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, huh. From a photo group in in. Someone stole a stagecoach and crashed it. It's come out of the part you usually can't open. That's awesome. Yeah, that's super huh. cool. I love the idea that, like... Got a jet. Got a blast. Yeah. <laughs> got a blast. A hot dip. <laughs> Do you say that at the end of your stream? No. Got a blast. I should. He did the finger guns. You know he's cool enough for it. Got I a love, blast. I love Jimmy. Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy! What is that? Jimmy Neutron. It, it's I'm playing the Carl Weezer voice. Oh, I, I didn't watch Jimmy Neutron. Oh, my God. I forget how young I am I'm too old. I'm too old. Captain of the That's Captain of the Zoomers. That's my fault. That's my fault. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> travel safe. Yeah, I yeah. will see you guys uh, later. See you later. I'm yeah, leaving you meet. in the capable hands. Hey, my chat. These guys will be your new uh, parents. We're your new dads. For only like 30 minutes, though. So yeah. Don't worry about it. Cute dad stream. <laughs> all right. See you guys in a bit. See you, man. Bye, Kraken. Bye, Ride Kragen. safe. All right. Now that he's gone. No, you do your energy drink sponsorship. Yeah. This is this is a big Hit deal. It. All right. So. Uh, Wait until I walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so close, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so big news this week: uh, Fast Nine trailer. John Cena. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. What? Is it cool? It's very cool. Oh, I'm sure it is. It's ex- it's extremely cool, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yet again, underground street racing will suddenly become in the zeitgeist of American culture. Wait, what? Yes. Those movies aren't about underground street racing at all anymore. What? 
No, I mean, but like yeah, saving but the people world. People know sure. the DNA is still there. It's, it's cars got to go fast. Is my point. That's and everyone's true. You're right about that. Everyone's going to be on that tick real hard. And as you know, I've I've latched my brand to the Fast and Furious yeah, fan. Love Fast and Furious for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was early on it, and it's only brought me success, fame, fortune. That's right. Uh, universal acclaim. I would agree. Yeah. Uh, governmental awards, all, all of sorts it. of yeah, all of it, yeah. everything. <laughs> so that's why I finally found the perfect match. Bing is yesterday's news. I should have known that. Didn't work out. They didn't write to me, maybe because I don't. What was it? Oh, Bing. Yeah, That's Bing. Right. Not the search engine, everybody. Well, you know, cross branding. Energy drink. Cross branding. <laughs> right. How many times I gotta say this? <laughs> um, so this time though, this is it. the The connection's too strong. You're looking at it. You just you. They've been around for years. It's Nos, Bruce. Yeah, it's <laughs> like the cars. <laughs> was this uh, <laughs> was this an energy drink before the original Fast and Furious? I don't think it was. Was it? <sighs> I don't know because I started noticing it after that movie came out. While you talk about Nas, yeah, look, look it up. Uh, so yeah, this is this is gonna supercharge me, much like uh, a certain fluid supercharged the physiques of both John Cena and uh, Vin Diesel. John Cena looks weird in that movie. Is it just me? He looks kind of weird. I mean, he looks great, but he also looks kind of weird. Uh, he looks like really skinny, like r- super skinny, but he's still jacked. Anyway, uh, I pound one of these bad boys. Nas gets a load of this, of this guy, getting on board with the franchise. And uh, they they can't wait. They can't say no, Bruce. They can't. I and mean, you're right. They how, are they, how are they going to? They're not going to. It's impossible. The branding is too too ripe. Also, this has way too much sugar in it. So uh, Fast and Furious came out four years before this energy drink. Wow. So they may have spawned this energy drink. And I'm actually surprised that there's never been an integration between Nas and Fast and Furious. Isn't that weird? Yes. Maybe I'm the one... Much like uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson holding a chain in one hand and the back of a tow car in the other, From maybe Hobson I'm the Sh- one. To, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, maybe I'm the one to, to <laughs> bring these brands together. Me is the middle. I mean, and I'm I get all the forward money. to it. I, I think we should all back Lawrence in his uh, yeah. dream. And I got ties into cyberpunk now. The cross branding. You, you don't have those. Stephanie well, does. I mean, come on, Bruce. <laughs> what is she going to do without me? I mean. I sit at home all day. She She's can't. a strong, independent woman. I mean, so. she is, but I, I did the dishes before I came over here. <laughs> that's good, that was good for tip, you. Tip for tat, That's dude. a good boyfriend. Yeah, I try. That's I a try. good boyfriend. Uh, how, does, how does it taste? I haven't popped it yet. Let me, I've been shaking it up a little bit, so... <laughs> just, I'll try it. Very careful. Oh, there we go. That's that's the hiss of the... Of the NOS going into the yes. engine. And then, and, then, brrr, and then when you put it in your body, it's when it revs it up. Man, remember that. Let's. Uh, this is part of the branded segment here. This is part of the ad read. Um, uh, it's no ad read, by the way. We're not sponsored. Yeah, no, but not yet. <laughs> not yet. This is just a little taste. Uh, just like this taste of NOS. Oh, that's, just, that's sweet. Mm. I've, I've heard that there's a ton of sugar in yeah, like, it. Even a, more so than normal. An outrageous <laughs> amount of sugar in this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, one can has a hundred and two percent of your daily amount of sugar. In it. <laughs> oh my! Two hundred and ten calories. By far the most caloric energy drink we've sponsored on this podcast. Holy shit! Uh, Nos, it uh, tastes like that one scene in Fast and the Furious where you got to like see the Nos go into the engine and combust and then come out the yeah, exhaust. I love Remember that scene. That? That it's sick. so cool. Fast and Furious One actually had some legitimate dri- uh, driving stunts. It's a good it. movie. It is actually a fun and legitimately yeah. good Fast movie. Fast and Furious One is a good movie. I don't uh, know. I can't remember if Too Fast, Too Furious is a good movie. It's not. Uh, it, it's it's fun and dumb, but it's it's okay. mostly saccharine. There, three, three, you, three is okay. Right? Tokyo, Tokyo Drift, Drift is more than okay. It's the fantasy that I want to live every uh, day of my life. I mean, it's a good movie. I want to be a 40-year-old <laughs> Texas guy that moves to Japan and goes to high school. And then also, the fourth one is garbage, by the way. Yeah. It's went, really bad. I went back and watched it again. It wasn't as bad as I remember. But it takes itself so seriously it's, yeah, it's is the problem. Then Fast Five is awesome. Yeah, Fast Five is when like it actually picked up stride. Six is also super good, and then it's kind of kind of declining from there, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, look at that burb. That's a good burb. Oh. Crows are big, man. I saw one in a parking lot. Also, it kind of freaked me out. They're also apparently very smart. Yeah. They're uh, crows are apparently some of the smartest animals that exist. Oh, do you think Gal Gadot can come back if Han can? Uh, I think yes. it's pretty likely. There yes, was, Scott Joseph. There was no corpse, and I said this. I I was screaming it in the theater. <laughs> When, she, when Gal Gadot like, just shut up, she just falls into a black void. I'm like, ah, there's no corpse. She's coming back. Uh, but yeah, justice for Han. Hashtag. Um, did here's a little fun tr- fact for you, Bruce. Yeah, I'm ready. They never Hit say me. it in the movies. It's a it's a side shot of one monitor. His name is Solo Han because he's Korean, but his name is actually Han Solo. Isn't that funny? They always just call him Han, but his, his Sol Dash O Han. Get it? Ah. 
And he dies. These movies aren't good. Hobbs and, and Shaw. I went and saw Hobbs and Shaw in theaters. Hobbs and Shaw was fun. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like it got me. It's, it's just like Rise of Skywalker. Like, oh, like, at I, some point it's just too much. It's just too much. And, and like at some point it was just way, way, way too much. And I was like, this is too much. Too much. Like the the whole like. They can't control their guns <laughs> because they're not connected to the internet or whatever. So then that's why they fight them with their sticks on the island. I was like, <laughs> I was just like, ah. Uh, gotta come up with some kind of gimmick. I know my you're fi- right. My I do I do enjoy tracking the gimmick of why the action hero doesn't just get shot right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my yeah. my absolute favorite and the one that shockingly made the most sense was in Transporter One. Jason Statham rolls up. He's like he's brawling people. Uh, and then they send somebody down to like the locker to get all the guns. The guy sticks the key in, and he's like, oh, "Jason Statham's there!" Kicks him, and like the the key breaks off. Of the oh, lock. so you can't open the lock? Yeah, it's a really quick shot. And then and then they've already established that all the guns are in that locker, and they can't get to him now. So now they got to douse themselves in oil and wrestle. See, I actually I kind of appreciate when movies will at least give me a throwaway scene or a line, telling me why something did or didn't happen. I, I actually really like that a lot. Yeah. And when I, when they start to just like gloss over those things or probably they probably cut them out in the editing process is probably what happens then to me that becomes a worse movie because then then if you really start to think about it you go what why did they do that and then there's no explanation and you just go this i don't don't like it i don't like it point of no return no return for me um some people don't have that though some people just ah who cares turn your brain off watch it well it's uh it's it's fascinating to bring that up because yeah action movies like Action movies have an element of of uh, unbelievability to them. Yeah, that people they can do. survive the things they go through. Right, and it, it really is a balancing act of asking a certain amount of belief from the audience, but then reinforcing that with explanation. Yeah, um, my favorite are the ridiculous movies that establish tone in such an effective way that you can't help but be along for the ride. Um, Kingsman is super good at that. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, it opens yeah. with like yeah. money for nothing blaring and like awesome, like awesome, just super fast paced shootout stuff. So immediately you, you know. know what the tone of the movie is going to be. That's right. Um, one of my favorite movies that escalates in tone, where each time it's just a little bit more, is uh, Transporter Two. Yeah. Which is, yeah, yeah. I mean, frankly, like I feel like with Fast Nine, they, there's like if you haven't seen the trailer, there's a part where like. There's like a suspension bridge that I guess Vin Diesel was going to drive across, but it falls like Indiana Jones or whatever. <laughs> so then he like sizes it up and he like does all the fucking physics in his head uh-huh. and he drives over one of the ropes that's still connected. Mm-hmm. The anchor like catches on the axle of the car and then he like bungee swings the car. How did he know car. that was going to happen? Because he knows, Bruce. He knows cars. <laughs> There's something like that is that is full on Transporter 2 absurdity where at it escalates in stupidity until at one point... I know, I know Jason, what you're talking yeah, about. Jason Statham gets in his car, he sees the reflection of a bomb flips under his car. It, yeah. He hits a ramp, flips it, and knocks it off with a hanging crane. I and saw it. And it lands it, with like a cool thing. It's ridiculous. It, that was the end of the movie for me. When oh, that, that, that happened. That knocked you out? I was like, that, we're done. That was it. And also, I think, I think the effect is really bad, It's too. It's super bad CGI. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, Kraken, you didn't miss anything. Kraken's in the chat. Oh, um, Kraken, did chat. You didn't miss anything. We've only been talking shit about you for a while. Did you get, did you get Chinese yet? Uh, did he bring his switch? I didn't no, see his switch didn't. in his hand. Oh, he's all he's all about those Lumas now. You got oh, oh, yeah, a remote right. into your PC. The, the Temtem Lumas. I forgot about those. The big difference between those who liked Episode Nine and those who didn't. If you can turn your brain off, you, you like it. it. If, if you, you can't, can't you, you don't. don't. Well, so uh, I disagree. I can turn my brain off pretty effectively, and I still didn't like it. Cl- cloudless, I I can too. Um, I and I I sort of proud myself on that because like I could mm. go through like Hobbs and Shaw. I was like, all right, yeah, I had a little fun. But then as soon as somebody starts talking about it, or as soon as you start to think about it at all it goes away and that was the problem with star wars is that i love thinking about star wars so i saw the movie and then immediately started thinking about it because that's what i like to do and i went "Uh oh (laughs) Oh, (laughs) my brain immediately couldn't account for all the things that happened in the movie yeah and then i went oh no that wasn't good well the the problem is a mismatch in tone because like episode nine and this is my take you know i'm not i'm not good enough to be a film critic but it asks you to take it seriously at the times it wants you to take it seriously but then it slams you with so much dumb crap that you can't. Yeah. So if it, if you want to turn your brain off, that's fine. But then what are you, what are you meant to do with your brain when there's a heartbreaking scene of, of Ray and you're supposed Kylo? Because you need your brain to tap into emotion. Yeah. yeah. And if you're just having dumb fun, then those scenes are worthless. That's right. And, it, and at some point, you're just like, well, if it was just a big dumb fun movie, then yeah, it wouldn't have had that stuff in it. And it wouldn't have asked that of the audience, but it did. Transporter 2 didn't have that. No, no, It just no. had... There was no emotion. ...wicked there. fights of dudes beating the shit out of each other with yeah. fire hoses and stuff. And then it ended. Yep. It was awesome. Yep. And Matthew Modine being a 2000s dad. 
<laughs> movie rules. The, rules. One of the best movies I can think of that it does a really good job of balancing the tone of ridiculousness, but also tapping into the emotion. For me, it was Cabin in the Woods. Ah. Uh, Cabin in the Woods does an amazing job of like obviously subverting expectations because that's what the movie's all about. But then um, certain parts where the heroes are in danger or actually the end of the movie, uh, spoiler alert, um, the end of the movie, they, you you really feel bummed. You're like super fucking bummed hmm. that they made it all the way through this whole adventure and then, well, I guess that's it. And then it ends. Um, and I remember being like, wow, that, that was a real bummer. And I was like, man, that movie wasn't meant to be a bummer. It was meant to yeah. be kind of funny and like, you know, whatever. But they, they uh, what's his name? Drew, Drew something. Starts with a G directed the film and uh, just did a fantastic job of making me care about characters that I should not have cared about in this ridiculous kind of, you know, fantastical horror movie. Yeah, I gotta watch so, that again. Drew Goddard, uh, okay. Drew Goddard, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, he, he's gone on to do other things and he's, he's really good, but uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's just a really good movie. Now, now, now I'm just thinking about movies that can do both. They, it's, it's very, very hard. I feel like Kung Fu Hustle is probably the one oh, that yeah. goes so hard in either direction. Yeah. It, it is literally Looney Tunes at one point. Yeah. But then by the end of the movie, like, I got a little misty at it. Um, some true. of the stories yeah. they tell, and I'm just like, oh. Uh, yeah. Man, what's Stephen Chow up to? I think he got back into directing, but I don't. I didn't see The Mermaid. I need to check that out. Uh, uh, I guess a better explanation is if you can buy into, because that's how Star Wars works now, even though it has never, never worked, worked like, like that. that. Then you can force yourself to like it because you had a good time. Likewise, if you want to like it for more than it is, it can sting. After episode eight, I had no expectations. Oh, cloudless. Okay, yeah. So, like, episode eight sounded like just got rid of what you were thinking about, and you're like, ah, fuck it. Star Wars is whatever. Now. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. Like, yeah, Star Wars. Star Wars, this is how Star Wars is now. Episode 8 was entirely that. I mean, and we don't have to get into the whole thing. We've been on it so much. Everybody before. everybody talks about it all the time. Although, yeah. is this is this a bad thing? Chad, I'll, I'll ask you honestly. How often do you and or your friends talk about Star Wars? <laughs> because we're always talking about it. And, uh. I, and I don't know if that's a, it's a good representation. Like, is this something that you and your friends still talk about? Not often, never. Um, in my chat, not at all. Never, not at all. Sony Pony says a lot. Not at all. I mean, like, Kraken's chat says very infrequently. I see, like, what is it about Star Wars that we talk... Why do we talk about it so much? I can't figure it out. Because it always comes... For me, I'm always thinking about it. So I'm always like, oh, man, what a bummer. Well, it is... Um, I think it... I think it's fitting because it's certainly, I think, uh, apart from its just stature as an entertainment property, it tries to play with some of the core tenets of storytelling. And it tries to experiment around with that. I mean, the original three movies were really good about just t- telling a cool fairy tale but in a setting and they managed to do it with like interesting characters and then to splinter off from that i guess it's like yeah i mean i guess if, if it were 2000 years ago we'd be talking about the iliad or whatever <laughs> yeah. um, actually i don't think that was zero i don't know when that was written it was written i think even i don't, I don't know actually what was the iliad and the odyssey written was it after zero <laughs> ad if only there were a way to know uh, so yeah, um, no, it's 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 funny too because I was trying to think about it because I was I was watching Goldeneye, uh, and it just had me thinking about the Bond franchise and like how that. Uh, oh, it's BC. Dang, it is three thousand years. I was ago. gonna say it was before that, but I wasn't sure. Everything started with Jesus. We all know this. Um, but I was like, okay, what other franchises have done that? Have like been a a cultural phenomenon? Not many. And I was like, actually, Fast and Furious. Kind of. In ways that I wasn't expecting, because uh, I, I was thinking about Need for Speed Underground for some reason, and I was like, oh yeah, that, that game totally exists because of Fast and Furious. And then I was like, oh yeah, that movie kind of kicked off a whole cultural weird obsession with like tuner cars and underground street racing and stuff. It did, yeah. It lasted for like, I don't know, five years maybe? But it was totally a thing, and now it's kind of become its own deal. Uh, Fast and Furious, that is. It's a weird action franchise, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how long it'll last once it's done. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I, there, I don't know if there's really anything else pop culture wise in the last 40, 50 years that was that was like Star Wars, other than Star Trek, maybe. <sighs> That's the only other thing yeah. I can think of. Um, Pokemon. Pokemon uh, is has only been around what 20, 30 years, twenty five years. Minecraft. Minecraft has only been ten. Yeah, so it's staying power. I'm just curious. Mm. I'm just curious to see. I'm pretty sure Pokemon and Minecraft are going to be there I, I for the so. next 50 years. I think, I think you're in right. In some form. I think you're right. Fortnite? Yeah, I'm curious to see how Fortnite endures. Like, Minecraft is... Oh, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is good, too. Yeah, I guess... Well, yeah, Lord of the Rings has been around, like, 60 years? A long time. I mean, it was written in the... I think the 50s. I think Tolkien wrote in the 50s. Oh, Harry Potter? 40s. Yeah. 
Well, Harry Potter's pretty much done now, though, isn't it? I mean, was is anyone excited about the next Wizarding World of Newt's Commander movie? Those movies are that the most recent one was terrible. I love Harry Potter. Yeah, no, that movie was awful. Yeah, it was um, pretty bad. It's it's interesting too because that movie I could I could there are a few few movies where I can just see the whiteboard with all the like beats they have to hit and like just like giant question marks between the like the lines trying to draw between them and then whenever <laughs> <laughs> whenever they uh. It's, it's fun to see people try and connect beats they know they need to hit because they're just so formulaically in every like teen drama. Ugh. But then to have those connections be so flimsy. First one was fun. Eh, I, I enjoyed the first parts one. Parts of it were fun. Uh, the, the second one... I don't know if I remember even the second one. Yeah, Johnny Depp's evil. They break him out of a thing. And then I'm some gonna stuff go, happens. It sucks because I'm gonna go see those movies. I'm gonna see them to the very end because I love Harry Potter. So I like I love being in the world. But it's just like Star Wars, where I'm like I'm gonna go and be like, that was dumb. And then I'm gonna pay for it again. Um, and that's that's the I, I feel like the thing that got me the most was Spider Man. Once I had I, I once I had seen the Amazing Spider Man two, I said I'm never oh. going to see another Spider Man film ever again. But then Homecoming came out and it was from. MCU. Yeah. So I was like, oh, fuck. I know, they got you. I know, they got me again. I was that way with X-Men 3, and I haven't seen any of the Brian Singer X-Men's. The, they, the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, some of them are not bad. Like, uh, First Class isn't bad. Um, Days of Future Past isn't bad. But I don't know that you're missing anything by not seeing those movies. No, you know, like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll get around to it at some point, but... There's also, uh, yeah, like Birds of Prey is coming out. It's supposed to be great. I guess reviews, people like it. The reviews are really positive. Boy, I, do I struggle to care. Yeah, me ah. too. Me too. Yeah, me too. I don't care at all. I'm, uh, the next I finally watched Dr. Sleep. That's I haven't cool. seen it, yeah. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't, I have not seen Dr. Sleep. It's not The Shining, but what could be, you know? <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, because The Shining was, that, again, that's, that's a cultural touchstone. That's like, a, that's a movie that's been around for 40 years, 50, something like that, 50 years. Man, it's and everybody loves it. It's a, it's a masterpiece. So oh, I forgot about Dark Phoenix. I was just thinking Apocalypse. Dark Phoenix exists. I didn't see that. Oh man, how can they be getting worse? Okay, now I kind of want to watch all the X Men just because it crossed over that divide between being like middling and boring to actually so bad it might be fun to watch. There, uh, Apocalypse wasn't. Apocalypse was so boring. Really? It was very boring. Well, they're supposed to have X Men fights. I'm telling you, man, it was so boring, and, and, uh, it, and that's why I didn't like it because it was so boring. Uh, okay. Like that, because I was like, this is so bad because it's so boring. Lame. Yeah, it was. It was really. Would James Bond start the spy genre era? Man, I mean, I don't. James Bond has been around for so long now. I don't know that you can really start that genre. It's already. It's already kind of been. I mean, there were a ton of knockoffs that tried to be like James Bond. What I, like what I find ago. fascinating is when James Bond becomes whatever is popular. So like Star Wars came out, and then James Bond goes to space, and oh, there yeah. are laser guns in it, and it was one of the best. Like Moonraker is one of the best earning Bond films. Yeah. So there are a series of just like and like Casino Royale opens with this huge parkour sequence because that's exactly what was hot right then. Yeah. Uh, Casino Royale is still a fucking. Oh, it's a great movie. movie yeah. Um, so it is interesting to see uh, to to see the Bond series just sort of like just kind of absorb whatever's around it. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea where that's going to go from here, but. What's wild, too, is they used to crank those out, man. They were, like, one every year, every other year, all the way up until, like, the mid-70s. Uh, and, then, and then it just really slowed down. Yeah, and a, a lot of them are good, because oh, precisely yeah. that reason. Uh, my question, I saw somebody ask it, but I, I've been thinking about it a lot, too, which, which is the MCU in 20 years. Mm. Are we are we going to go back and, so, and look at that and be like, wow? Or are we going to be like, oh. I can't wait, because cause kind of... One of the things that I kind of uh, find fascinating about Star Wars is the original trilogy told, like, the perfect story. You got love, you got good, evil, all this stuff. The original trilogy tried to do something a little bit different, tried to work those elements in, but it largely it was like a, a... I guess the subtext of it was it was a political story about, about taking over the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. Which, when you step back from it, is actually pretty cool. The 789, I have no goddamn clue. The, the thing is, though, like... You can't tell the same story multiple times. You have to trick people into thinking it's new again. And now that we've done a full arc of hero origins and hero stories, and they were all told like it was the core story that's been told a million times in yeah. comic books culture. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and they had all the iterations through comic books culture to really zero down on the beats that worked and the ones that didn't. Now that we've done it all, or most of it, or all the good ones, what happens next? They just tell the same story again, but with a different actor? Yeah. And then people are going to catch on to that. Like, I even saw people saying that, like, Homecoming and Far From Home were kind of the same movie. 
It's like, yeah, because every Spider-Man story is exactly the same. I mean, the hero story. Yeah. Well, yeah, but Spider-Man has some flavor that's that's kind of unique to him. Mostly about him trying to find a father figure and then getting betrayed by that father figure. I mean, the Spider-Man game was exactly all the tropes, exactly in the right order. Yeah. Uh, which kind of bugged me because I was like, I've, I've read this a million times. So I feel like there are a lot of people who have followed comic books that are used to this and expect it. The 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 like variations on a theme. Yeah. But movie going audiences, now that they've seen the whole thing once, and they come back and it's like, oh, here's a new hero, and hey, he's got some problems. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I saw this movie before. No shit, because it's the same thing. I don't, I'll be really, that doesn't make it bad. I'll be really interested to see if it... if it Because uh, I'm really excited for the Eternals and stuff. I'm excited for these movies because they're made by the same people that made the other movies, and those movies are pretty good. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll, I don't know when it'll wear off. I was just... It's, for me, it's more of like 30 to 40 years from now. Will I still be thinking about Avengers Endgame? You know, like, will I be going, like... Probably not. Man, well, what a great, you know, like, what a great time in, in like, pop culture's life uh, when they have 10 amazing movies lead up to this, you know, this huge... Or, I mean, 10, 23 movies yeah. lead up to this thing. Or will I just be, like, forgotten about it completely? I have no idea. They'll probably reminisce about it. I don't know. I, sure. I feel like what what they would love to do, and, and this is where Bond kind of comes back into it, when they were cranking one of those movies out every year, yeah, after about the fifth one, it was the same thing. It, and like tropes kind of emerged is that yeah he's gonna he's gonna bang a chick then she's gonna die then there's gonna be some kind of double cross and I'll have a gadget that he uses to get out of this he'll situation get, he'll get caught with the villain yeah the villain will have a really slow moving death ray a or whatever. penile and eliminating laser yeah Goldfinger, Goldfinger was like the first real Bond movie uh, where it really settled into the formula and, and really nailed it yeah. also we had a jetpack sick <laughs> um <laughs> But, yeah, I, I wonder if comic book movies will get there. When somebody can go watch a movie and be like, yeah, it was exactly what I thought it would be. But, you know what? It was an evening. Um, uh, I, yeah. They may be there now. Yeah? For a lot of, for a lot of movie, movie-going audiences. And where it's just enough to get them to, to come back, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I also wonder, too, it's like, with the state of online criticism. I should, well, criticism may be a harsh word, but just like, communal discussion the discourse yeah. yeah where everybody's got to have a hot take and and, and, and it, like kind of it definitely uh, pushes people to extremes uh, I feel like that it's going to be harder for people to enjoy the same movie over and over when uh, internet consensus is this movie's trash because we saw it already whereas like I don't know if Twitter were around when the seventh Bond movie came out people would be like this is garbage you shouldn't watch it instead it was just some dude who went to work and was like oh Bond he's going to shoot somebody alright and then goes and watches it and it's like that was pretty cool he shot people I'm, so, I'm going to blow your mind right now, Lawrence. Oh. It may be like that right now. I mean, there are a lot of people that aren't on Twitter. That's true. That are they're going to see movies and do whatever they want anyway. You're right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, Twitter's not pervading everything, thank God. Yeah. Or, or just <laughs> so. online discourse in general. I, I've been trying to get distance from that just to kind of remind myself of the things that matter and the things that don't. And, yeah, getting mad about movies is... Uh, Very low on the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very low on the list. I mean, this this is a whole other topic, but there are people who believe, and I don't know where I, I sit on it, but there are people who believe that by pushing agenda through media, you basically shape culture. And the way that America is, it's kind of true. What you see becomes what you believe. You know, yeah, that's true. Uh, that was yeah. a good. That's a good ending for the podcast. Indeed. What Nos, you see, holler at me is, uh, <laughs> if you believe I'm sponsored, then I am. So, except for when he doesn't get any money. Yeah, except for that part. That doesn't really count as a sponsorship. Except for that part. Uh, do you got any big shout-outs this week, Bruce? Big shout-outs. Oh, yeah. Remember, if you're going to listen to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, whatever, oh, yeah. review it. Uh, say how much you like it or don't. It doesn't matter. Either way, <laughs> review it. Um, and I will put links to... I, I forgot to put links to the uh, audio feeds in the YouTube description, but I will. I will do. That. I keep forgetting that too. I, I've got a. Oh, you got a. You got a nice little. Yeah. Bot? Um. I believe Austin made that. Oh, nice. So that's good. At least. There's yeah. A, there's one in my chat too for some links to some services. But yeah. Kraken had a meeting, so he had to step out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thor. Thoric. Thoric. Thoric one. Yeah, that's where Kraken just left about twenty minutes ago. Um, just missed. It. I guess for me. Either Friday, Saturday, Sunday, somewhere in there, I'm finally going to do my book reading stream. Oh, great. Provided that all my gear gets here and it all works. That's awesome. Um, I just need extensions to run my junk across the room. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Come and watch, but don't tell anybody. Because uh, <laughs> Why not? Theoretic, I've heard people say, you're not allowed to do it. What? Yeah. Read that, a book on stream? Uh-huh, because it's somebody's property. You're basically giving away an audio book. But we're doing that with 
video games? So, yeah, it's, it's actually fascinating to think about because I guess the argument is that your input into a video game changes oh, I see. its it changes nature. It. Yeah, okay, right. uh, also, games require input to be seen. Otherwise, you'd just be looking at a but start your, screen. Your input into the book changes the way the book's read. That's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> I Video game copyright and video game fair use stuff got settled extremely in the Internet's favor. Yeah, it did. Uh, whereas legacy media is not quite so... Uh, not quite so so happy about it. But if you ask the publisher, the publisher is out of business. Uh, <laughs> they got they got bought and sold a couple of times over. I actually looked into it to try to find a contact link, and, and now it would just be some holding company. And if I got an email, they'd just be like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" And then I mean, it'd probably go into their junk folder, and that'd be it. So, yep. so yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go balls out there and see what happens. But uh, yeah, if like you wanna that. if you like wanna that. see the the uh, the Lawrence players uh, put on a, a performance of Batman Forever the novel. Uh, I guess keep a lookout for that. How long are you going to read it for? I don't know until my voice gives out. It's only two hundred pages, and the, oh, that's all right. That's yeah. The text is pretty big. <laughs> two hundred pages. So what is that? Two. That's like three and a half hours, four hours. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. All right. And it's uh, there's only like seven, eight characters in that thing. So cool. Yeah. This is, this is part of me just kind of experimenting with performance and just doing dumb stuff. I'm so. looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Hopefully, I don't make a fool of myself. So we'll see. Um, I'll be doing more crowd control stuff, which is the. I, that's so cool. It's so much fun. Ah. It's so much fun where people can influence the game you're playing. Yeah. Um, so they have Dark Souls. I saw you doing Dark Souls. That's they have the Dark Souls. Idea. They have Super Mario World. They have Ocarina of Time. They have a bunch of different games. So I'll be doing that for sure this weekend. And then more Battlefront. We're going to play Battlefront tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. So, uh, more Battlefront 2 with BB-8. See that little rolly boy going around? Um, all right, bye, Kraken. <laughs> bye, Kraken. Oh, he's back. I don't know. He's probably in the chat or something. Bye, Kraken. We'll see you later, YouTube. Yep, bye, everybody. See you next week. Uh, Thanks for listening slash watching. <laughs>